Everyone stop everything you're doing because we are coming to Europe on tour. Yeah. Trash Taste Europe Tour 2023 is happening. We are selling tickets right now. Click the link mm -hmm. down in the Click description it. below, but they're going fast. fast. Click the links down in the description below. Do it. I'll see you there. I, I like mm -hmm. going uh, to Anime Expo. It's always crazy. I mean, you just see the most <laughs> insane cosplayers. The one character I never understood because I didn't realize it was this popular was uh, Jinko Inoshima, yeah. Himiko Toga from uh, My Hero Academia <laughs> as well. Fuck, oh my God. What is it with, I mean, what is it with the insane girls all and the cosplayers, man? Welcome back to another episode of Trash Taste. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> way, way to go, Joey. Uh, and I'm here once again with the boys, Jerry and Garn, and I'm your host for today. Was that, was that your That's way of saying name. hello, yeah. Joey? Was that your way of saying hello? That is, that is my way of saying hello. I can't walk. I did a ring fit stream yesterday and my legs don't function. <laughs> Yeah, you, uh, what was it? Cause uh, you don't have anywhere to cycle. So you're like, I'm going to destroy my legs inside my house now. I don't know. I wanted to do a Ring Fit stream cause I thought Ring Fit was a fun <laughs> game. And I actually like, I actually play Ring Fit like sometimes casually. Uh -huh. Right. Cause it's fun. And it is fun. Yeah. It, it, they have gamified exercise. Nintendo have done something right. Mm. Cause it was worryingly fun doing exercise. It's a fantastic game. Yeah, uh, it pretty is. Pretty well made. Um, and I, you know, I think casually it's an amazing game. I think mm. grinding it is absolutely fucking stupid. I don't, think, I, I don't think it's supposed to be grinding. <laughs> well, no, because the game every every time you clear a stage, it's like, all right, good job, man. Uh, I want to do those cooldown stretches now, and then I have to keep pressing like no. Um, so it keeps going. But I, I don't know. I thought, huh. I wonder, I wonder if I can burn one thousand calories on the in-game um, like thing. Mm. Yeah. And I wondered how long that would take. And so I thought, how well, long I'll, did it take? Uh, eight hours of in-game time. Eight? You you wait. You I streamed was, Ring you Fit streamed for, eight Ring for eight hours. Yeah, yeah. I streamed straight. What's I wrong with like you, bro? Break. Well, I wanted to exercise too, so I was like, "Oh, you're alive right now." Well, I can't walk. I, I actually <laughs> had to get stretched into the set today. No, yeah, I, yeah, I woke up with such immense pain because yeah. it's all like no stretches, shit. yoga, squats, um, and I, I don't know. I just thought it would be fun, and I guess I didn't consider how it, it would cripple me the next day. <laughs> and I'm still tired. Like I slept like nine hours, and I'm still tired. I'm yeah, like, no shit. <laughs> but was it fun? Was it fun? It was pretty fun, actually. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's a, like Ring Fit again. It's a goaded game. Like the music goes un, unfathomably hard. Yeah, for but for it. eight hours, bro. Yeah, eight hours. Yeah, it was too long. You're yeah. sadistic. <laughs> and like, ever, I tweeted out being like, "Oh yeah, I beat, I beat, uh, I got one thousand calories in Ring Fit." Which, by the way, I didn't know the calorie counter only goes up to nine nine nine, and then it doesn't roll over. Go. One thousand calories. What? It's stuck. It gets stuck. So that was that was kind of anticlimactic. <laughs> so technically, you clickbaited because well, uh, well, you said a thousand yeah. in the title, and uh, I'm waiting for that extra okay. calorie still. All right, well, he's still okay, going. All right, okay. fine, fine. <laughs> and uh, everyone's like, "Really? Only one thousand calories in eight hours?" I was like, well, yeah, of fucking course it's not 1000 calories. Like, what do you, this game- this is, Yeah, this is ring fit calories. Yeah, the game also like fucking lies about how much you're burning. <laughs> it, it is app, cause like my, I was wearing two different Fitbits mm. and they both said I burned 5,000 calories by the end of it. Um, how I, are you not just like skin and bones? <laughs> Rom, I'm, what do you mean? I got, I got junk in the trunk. There's yeah. a, lot of, a lot of reserves to work through. Um, but, but I mean, if there was a direction to lie about how many calories you're burning, I think it's better to uh, be inaccurate oh, for sure. about yeah, yeah. you for know sure. burning less calories than just overestimating it and being oh, like, no, 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 oh yeah, sure. I burned like 5,000 calories last night, actually. I mean like- some, In your ring fits as five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some exercises you're like, yeah, this makes sense. This wouldn't burn that many. And yeah. then when you're doing squats, you're like, there's no way this is four calories. I just did 20 <laughs> squats. This, yeah. this feels like 500 calories. <laughs> like I, it, it's too much. Yeah. Um, all right. The the important thing is though, like, okay, so it's a game, right? A Did game. you find a way to like break the game <laughs> in any way during those eight hours to be like, I'm Did doing- Did you clip through I, any I, of I, the stages? I'm doing the exercise, but I don't feel like I'm doing the exercise in the way they're intended is to Is it do possible the to speed run Ring Fit <laughs> yeah, Adventure? Yeah, you could, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. the trick to speed running it is I guess the first level you would get to a ledge and normally the game will tell you to jump over it, mm. but your character will keep running. Yeah. And when you're running, you're burning calories. Right. And the, the by far the quickest way to burn calories, <clears throat> like in real life, is to run. Yeah. Uh, it goes up a lot faster. So if you literally just stand in place and jog for like two hours, right. you burn a thousand calories, which I think actually is kind of accurate. I, I think if you stood in place for two hours and jogged, you probably would burn 
Yeah, probably, I think, around that. Yeah, that sounds about right. Maybe, maybe not, maybe a little bit less. God damn it, I can never get away from the running. It was yeah, it always, it's out, always the it running. It turns out it always comes back to the, yeah. the best way to burn calories is just to run. <laughs> yeah. um, or like cycle or do any kind of cardio intensity yeah, exercise. Yeah. Uh, running, I don't like doing as much normally because it hurts my legs after mm. a while. I, maybe it's because I have improper running form. I don't know, but I, that's why I like cycling. It's like, mm. you can't fuck it up. Swimming's also great too. Mm. Swimming's like actually a full body, which I really enjoy, but Japan is just allergic to pools. Yeah. Um, there's pools fucking nowhere unless you pay like $500 a month for a membership. Yeah, it's pay to win for the swing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, even then it's like, there's nowhere like, uh, there's one like it's kind of close to me, but it's still just a little bit inconvenient. Mm. It's like, dude, I'm not gonna go swimming if it's like fucking so far away. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah just exactly. Swimming. Swimming's OP as fuck though. Yeah. yeah. But so, just, so that's me getting, cause I was getting tired of doing these 12 hour streams where I just sat there. And mm. I, at the end of the day, I'd be like, Wow, yeah. I'm tired from all that streaming. I look at my Fitbit and it's like, you walked 1000 steps today. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I'll, I'll be honest. Cause I, I tried streaming a bit more this past month. Uh, yeah. even though most of it is just one single game, yeah. which you can probably guess what it is. And <laughs> oh, I'm just oh, like, I, I, it's just, I remember like finishing a day of streaming and uh, some days I'd stream like, you know, six hours. And mm -hmm. I just feel like, wow, I've done nothing with today. And uh, <laughs> tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and do nothing as well. I'm like, how do streamers do this? My mind has literally gone to mush. I did it for a week and I'm like, no, I, I actually need well, to touch it's, the it's grass. I guess cause you have, if you're a full-time streamer, yeah. you're like, oh, this is my, this is how I make money, right? But I guess for <laughs> yeah. you, it's like, well, I got, I got obligations no, and I, no, guess I got main videos to work on. No, because the thing is I did feel like I was still, I, okay. It's it's so weird because I'm like, I'm streaming, but I'm, I've, I always felt like I was tricking my brain into doing work when I actually oh. wasn't doing work, mm. even though like, I was making money and uh, you know, I was making like second channel videos and everything like that. Uh, so technically I was working, but it never felt like, I, I don't know, the work that I was doing never mm. felt like actual work. It just mm. felt like I was tricking. I had found like a, like a fucking work what? hack to be like, yes, I'm actually working, I'm making money, but am I doing anything to benefit society? I don't know if I, I don't know <laughs> if I do. You, would you categorize your normal videos as benefiting society? You know society? what, after, I didn't, <laughs> but after I've done streaming for like two weeks, I'm like, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm benefiting society, like most, a little most bit. Most self-aware streamer on the planet. <laughs> yeah. that's, why, that's why I can't like, I can't just do like only game streams, <laughs> like constantly, cause mm. I just feel like I'm not doing anything. Yeah. I'm like, I gotta mm. like, so this is like, you know, and lately I've been trying to pack more streams in and, and manage my schedule, which means normally something needs to get cut out and it's mm. normally the gym. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so it's like, fuck. Cause you know, the time for streaming in Japan, uh, again, this is like YouTuber talk. So I'm sorry to anyone who doesn't give a fuck because we, we live in this time zone, right? The best time zone to start streaming normally is pretty early in the morning for us or late at night. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and if you if I start at like 1 PM, it's like, no one's gonna watch. Yeah. Cause everyone's in, every, everyone in every other time zone can't really watch that. Mm. So it's kind of like, all right, well, fuck, fuck you. Yeah. Um, so normally if you start pretty early, but I hate going to the gym at night. So it's like, if I want to go to the gym, I got, I got to go in the, fuck, I got to go so in the morning. So you got to stream at night, go to the gym in the morning, right? So therefore yeah. stream ring fit. <laughs> or, therefore you fix your own problem. Do a week's worth of exercise in one stream. That's not, that's not how exercise works. I know that. <laughs> that is not. I'm joking. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I just wanted to do something kind of weird and ca contribute to society actually. That was yeah. a big part. That, 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 Were you contributing? <laughs> I informed people how many hours it takes to burn a thousand calories from Ring Fit. So, <laughs> there's, uh, there's your contribution to society. Was it psychotic? Yeah. Absolutely. Nutritionists um, are just saluting I don't know, you right I, now. Yeah. I think you probably feel that way about streaming because you, you, it's not your full time, like it's not your focus. So I think if you- I, I could, I don't think I could make it my full time focus, but after <laughs> trying it for a week, I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I feel, I, it's it's weird, right? Because I, you know, there are some there are some streams where you're like, yeah, that was that was really fun, and then some of them you're just like, that was really mind numbing, and I was just <laughs> playing a game for eight hours. Uh, oh, didn't yeah. really feel like I did anything, yeah. uh, and I couldn't imagine doing that every single day where yeah, I wake yeah. up and I'm like, don't really have anything to talk about because all I did was uh, play a game for eight hours. Uh, yeah, that was that was my life. The problem you know? is you found the joy of touching grass. That's that's <laughs> yeah. that's your problem. You're also yeah. bringing a lot of, um, I guess, a lot of the streaming one. And I guess it get, can be it's easier is when you kind of only get content or you only get like stuff to talk about from the thing that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. you're not relying on external things. Yeah, to yeah. Bring topics mm. to talk mm. about. Yeah, obviously there can be things to talk about. But yeah, I know that that's one of the biggest problems of streaming is that it, de it dedicates so much of your life. You almost get like no other life experiences. Yeah, mm. yeah, because exactly. your whole entire life is just this thing. Yeah. Whereas YouTube, right? You could, I could make. I remember I used to do this. 
uh, back when my videos took a lot less work, <laughs> and I still thought I was working really hard because you know you know how it is when you're a YouTuber. Yeah, of course. You're like, oh my god, yeah. I work so hard. <laughs> and then you're like, I would make like three videos in one week, and I would just do nothing for three weeks. Because <laughs> then I was like, oh, this is sick. That's yeah. what I do right now. <laughs> <laughs> Joey's on yeah, that gig up special. Yeah. Yeah. On my gig up yeah. schedule, yeah, man. exactly. Because you're like, man, I work so hard. And you're like, wait, I have like four days a week empty. I'm like, I don't work that hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. I. I, I I'm organize. doing other stuff. I'm doing other yeah. stuff. I organize. Yeah, but I mean, I guess you got like nonsense. You're working on stuff like that. Yeah, so that makes yeah. sense, right? Like that's just how your priorities shift. Yeah. Um. But yeah, streaming is just so time in, uh, intensive. Mm. Uh, dude, I don't know, man. It's weird. It's yeah. Like for that's weird. that's for that's, freaks. Yeah, that's why I went to uh, Touch Grass this weekend. Actually, after nice, my week, nice, uh, nice. two weeks of streaming. Nice. Where, where did you? Yeah, I, I went to. I didn't realize uh, this was going on until the weekend. Actually, there was a Thai festival in Tokyo, and like one of the biggest festivals okay. uh, outside of Thailand for like piece Thai culture. Yeah, I got, okay. a, got a little piece of home, which was interesting. Uh, so I turn up to this. Uh, I turn up to this. And of like, course, hey, where you guys at, huh? You <laughs> my homies. Okay, okay but first thing. the gap hour, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, first thing, uh, the only place in the world where I literally did not know what language to speak. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> I t I t English, <laughs> Japanese, yeah. Thai. Which do I one? do I do I speak English? Do I speak Japanese? Do I speak Thai? I remember like uh, I was I turned up, and uh, within like two hours, a fan recognizes me, and we start the conversation. He asks uh, if he could take a picture in Japanese. I reply mm. in Japanese. We uh, have a short Japanese exchange. Uh, then <laughs> Sydney comes in, and uh, she she wants to flex her the little Thai that she knows. Mm. So she starts speaking to him in Thai. She uh, she. He replies in Thai, speaks back to me in Japanese, but then I, I notice we're starting to speak in Thai. So I reply in Thai, right? And then another another fan recognizes me, starts speaking to me in English. So the conversation just switches to English. Oh and I'm just like, this is, I feel like I'm in like that YouTube video where it's just like a polyglot <laughs> flex how many languages they can speak. Cause we were, just, it, was, it was so fucking weird because everyone there was basically bilingual at least. Yeah. Oh Most of them were like how, how many of them were like actually Thai? Um, quite a lot actually. Yeah. So uh, there were quite a lot of Thai people there. Um, and it's so most of it was like food stalls mm. and everything like that. Uh, but there was one. Uh, so I was I was looking around to see what's uh, what store had the longest line? Cause I was like, I wanted the best Thai food. I'm, mm. I miss home. I wanted the, I wanted a piece of home. Mm. So I look around and I see one store had by far the longest line out of any stall in the entire festival. Okay. Pad Thai. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I swear and, and I like I, I subconsciously just start lining up just in case I want to do. And so I like track the line and the line's so long that it kind of like loops round. So oh it's it's, it's like it's like a line loops round no. and it loops back round again. So and I'm like, oh, what is this line for? It's line for the fucking garbage. <laughs> I, I shit, I shit you not. You're like, damn, what are they cooking? <laughs> Hey, uh, um, it's smelling kind of rancid right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet it's good. Yo, I, I smell durian coming <laughs> yeah. in now. <laughs> oh no, it's shit. Yeah, and, and I, don't, I don't know if this is a normal thing for like Japanese festivals, because this is yeah. kind of like the first festival that I've been to. Um, so they don't, they, they have, they don't have like, they don't have like bins there. They have like garbage stalls where you have the same old, you know, you, you have the same kind of like station where you can Fuck. separate your garbage, but they mm. have an actual like, uh, they have an actual stand for that. Well, like it's like manned? Yeah, it's like manned. Oh. Yeah. Man, that must be a shit job. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So so the problem was there's only so many stores where you could get rid of your garbage because there were no public bins or anything yeah, of like course. that. Um, so I don't know if this is normal for a Japanese festival because uh, I went there and most of the time, uh, most of my uh, waiting time was uh, waiting to get rid of the shit I, I kept buying. And yeah. unfortunately I was very hungry and I wanted to go to as many stores as possible. So anytime I bought something, I was like, Fuck's sake! I got like, I got like a Thai noodle in my hand, and I can't, I can't put it anywhere. No, <laughs> which uh, that's very Japanese. Yeah, yeah. which kind of kind of shows how dedicated the Japanese culture is to uh, following not, not the littering. rules and not littering. Yeah. Because I swear to God, if this was in place, because at bare minimum to get rid of any garbage, even if you had like a single bottle in hand, it was like a fifteen-minute wait. 
To get, to get, That's wild. To get, to get I, I would just eat the plastic. <laughs> I, I, would, I would give I, up. What I would have done is just like, I would have gone to like the nearest combini or something and yeah, just buy something, get a plastic bag and just hold that shit. Yeah. That's what I would have done. Yeah. And then and like once I'm like back at a station or another combi or yeah, something. Because, because it, it, it was uh, so fucking frustrating to get rid of just the simplest <laughs> thing. But at the same time, no one littered. I was fucking, it, I, I was amazed. There was not a single like, there was not a single piece of garbage I mm. saw at this massive mm. festival, which had like 2000, like Yeah, because any, any of people other there. country, if they see a line to throw shit out, people <laughs> would just be like, Fuck this. Yeah, and just like start up. littering, right? Yeah. But like, guys, just make a pile. And yeah. yeah. And I'll right. start, everyone join in. <laughs> yeah, especially when you throw in alcohol into that mix as well, oh which was God, the biggest, yeah. like, I can't I can't believe this is actually happening. People are getting drunk in public and mm. people are actually still conscious enough to uh, throw their shit away like and <laughs> wait in line to throw their shit away. Um, but oh yeah, props up to the Japanese people. Uh, I didn't know this, but uh, I went there and, uh, I didn't know there were Thai idols that uh, were a thing as well. Titles? Uh, titles? <laughs> titles? Uh, so there was, uh, you know, there was a main stage where, you know, different concerts and different performances yeah. uh, were going on, and I was like, Sydney, we got, we got, we got a beer in hand. Why not? Why? Well, let's let's watch some uh, let's watch some Thai musicians perform, mm. and uh, we we go in, and they go. So next uh, next band coming off is a uh, BKT 48. And I, I was like, that, Bangkok 48? <laughs> I was like, ain't, ain't no way. Ain't, ain't no way this is a fucking thing. And yeah, apparently, and apparently uh, on, uh, on steps on BKT 48, I guess the, oh my uh, I guess uh, Bangkok went, uh, we want AKB 48 at home. And uh, <laughs> Thai, Why? Thai, Why? Bangkok, Thailand 48. Yeah. Probably. I, I, yeah, I think it's uh, yeah. just BKT, which is like uh, Bangkok. Yeah, Bangkok, Thailand, 48. Yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> Bangkok have their own uh, BKT 48. And I found out that basically every, <laughs> doing research, I was like, there's no way, there's no way this is real. Yeah. Uh, it is real. Uh, apparently there's a Bangkok sister idol from fuck? AKB 48. Holy and there's shit. there's JKT 48 as well. Jakarta? Jakarta 48. <laughs> 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 yeah, Ain't no way. I had I had no idea this was a thing. Oh my uh, god! And they basically all do the same songs. They, it's it's like oh. they all do the same songs. Wait, so like, are they like original songs or are they like covers from AKB48? Some of them, I believe, some of them are covers, yeah. and some of them. This is my nightmare. Uh, <laughs> And I, I, I was like, it. I was like, I hate idol groups. Yeah, I, I do too, but I just love that concept. I'm just like, let's just take the city name, condense it down to three letters and get 48 of them. Yeah. And do that for every country. A Ramadan special, JKT48. Yo, JKT48 is doing a Ramadan special, let's go. Are you serious, JKT48? JKT48 Ramadan special, that's- just like, what is the fucking point of having 48 members? That's so fucking many. Because you get all the choice in the world to choose who, you, who your or she is, right? Yeah. So I have basically zero knowledge about AKB48. So mm -hmm. I, I, kind of, I kind of missed, uh, I kind of missed that train. Uh, hey, you're probably better off to be honest. Yeah, yeah. It, it was so fucking weird, right? Because yeah. obviously this was a Thai festival and uh, you know, even though there are a lot of Thai idol fans, uh, I'm sure uh, mm -hmm. this festival was full of just, you know, different members uh, of uh, people who just wanted to come to the Thai festival. And you just saw the dichotomy between there were like one or two hardcore <laughs> BKT48 fans that were just like, there was one, there was there were two people that were just like sitting on each other's shoulders yeah. and just like hardcore. You, you know, you know, when you, you know the choreography, but you like go, you like f they're those guys that just lean into it. Like it's, like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, it's, it's not just like they they know like the, the choreography. Yeah. They're like, Ugh. it's it's like they're it's like they're doing a fucking uh, like it's like they're doing a full on exercise. They're leaning into it one hundred percent, and then they're just like some Thai grandmas to be like. I don't know what's going on right now, but I'm going to clap. I'm going to clap. Is this a karaoke session? <laughs> Is this a karaoke Should I go up session? on stage? Correction, it's BNK48. Ah, B BNK, Bangkok, all right, BNK48. BNK48. BNK apologies, so, BNK fans. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how that discussion of the original AKB48 got to 48. Some guy was like hmm. 20 and the guy was like, more. And they were like, 
30. Yeah. More. <laughs> 40. Sure. Yeah. More. Like 50. Too That's many. too much. Yeah. 50 is too, too much. Too, too, many. too many. I just want to know why Why 48? That's so, it's so fucking. I'm sure there's that, some. This is, this, is one, this is one thing I never understood about idol groups that were that big. You know, like up to like, let's say eight is like pushing it for me. Mm. 10 is like the maximum to how many I can like reasonably follow along with. I'm just trying to think of See, like- I feel K-pop groups got it the best where it's like they limit it to between like five and 15. Like, yeah. I think that's like a manageable size. Even 15 Even 15, five, five, five. Yeah. yeah, five, five, yeah, five. Like five, uh, five to 10 is like a manageable size, you know? Yeah. I don't know why I, I view, I don't know why my mind has made this distinction, but I view like K-pop bands, I suppose, very differently to how I view idols, I guess. Mm. Well, I guess they are kind of different. Cause uh, I mean, they are idols. Yeah, they are idols, but I guess that the way that they market themselves is very different, right? Whereas, yeah. whereas- Is it though? Do they? In a weird sense, I think K-pop groups almost are, uh, I think they, again, this is me talking out my ass, somebody doesn't consume either of them. Yeah. Uh, in my head, I feel like, whereas the idols focus on, I suppose, catering to the customer and interacting with the customer uh, directly, mm. K-pop groups tend to focus more on releasing music and having kind of, I, I don't know, in my head, it's just, I guess I see it as like, cause idols, most idols, it's all about the fan meetups. It's all about the handshake right. things, you know, whereas it feels like the K-pop groups are more like, yeah, I'll, I'll be a fan, but mm. it's mainly you consume it and interact with it through all of the, the uh, media. Uh, I, mean, no, I, I disagree. Cause uh, like, I, I could be wrong. Again, yeah, this, is, yeah. this is the perspective of a man who's talking out of his ass. <laughs> he doesn't consume either. I yeah. mean, I'm not super knowledgeable on either, but I know for a fact that like in Japan, at least, you know, like when, when, when we think of like Japanese idols, right? Like AKB 48 is the first one, like just mm. large groups of yeah. like Japanese girls all dressed the same, mm. you know, interacting yeah. with fans. Like, you know, if it's like the underground idol scene and stuff like that, but like Japan also has a massive male idol culture as well. Like there are so many fucking super groups of like, just, just dudes. Yeah. who are doing basically like, you know, boy band shit, like, you know, Backstreet Boys type yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. And it's like, and a lot of that underground scene is, yeah, from the most part, it's majority filled with like all female groups. Mm. But there's also some like highly, highly dedicated like male groups okay. as well that yeah. do the same thing. I think it's just that there's, uh, because that whole like underground scene of like the, the all girl groups has just been so well documented compared to the male counterpart. Yeah, I, maybe that's it. That yeah. I think a lot of yeah. people just aren't aware that, no, there's male equivalents there's of it as well. so many documentaries about the idol industry. Exactly. Yeah. And they're I mean, all based around like the female groups, right? Yeah. 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 I remember there was one that released where it was like, it was, they were, uh, they were interviewing people who are fans of underground idol groups. Yeah. And there was one where it was like, I guess the mum was getting her like 12 year old daughter to be an idol. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. And then there was like a bunch of 40 year old dudes who were like paying to have Zoom calls with her. Yeah. And the mom was cool with it. It was fucking weird. Yeah. It was like, it was just so bizarre. And there was like, <clears throat> she would do live streams on some, I don't know, some weird website. Mm. It wasn't like any of the mainstream ones. And she would get like a thousand viewers and she was like 13. Yeah, and I, I think was like, this is weird. I actually, I actually so do weird. remember there, there is an app in Japan or it's website- for idols to go on, right? That's yeah. specifically, for, I think it's called Ichinana or something. Yeah, it was like one of those where you can like, and you just like, you watch them and you have to like keep paying. Yeah. yeah. It's basically like cam girling, except they're not like doing sexual they're stuff. Just they're just like yeah. talking basically. Yeah. yeah. But, but like you can tip weird. to like have conversations with them live. Right? <clears throat> yeah. And it's very, I mean, it's, one, it's parasocial as fuck, but yeah. it's also just like, Little creepy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm the one to judge people who want to yeah, want to yeah. stream and make money because yeah. that's what my, I fucking. My do. Yeah. opinion, it's a bit creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's like you know, it'd be hypocritical hypocritical of me to be like, man, look at these people going online and asking for money from people. You yeah, because you know, it's actually what I fucking do. <laughs> uh, although, please don't fucking give thank, me money. Thank, you thanks, patrons. <laughs> thank, thank you, uh, thank you, patrons. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like I feel like uh, the creepiness. Uh, what it could, because I, I feel like when you see a 12 year old fucking do it and the mum's encouraging, that's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah that's, I mean, we, we've seen that on like YouTube as well, mm. you know, some, some parents, parent YouTube channels, yeah, you know, are definitely yeah. like shilling their kid. Which... But I, I guess it's because you, you in this documentary, the one that was on YouTube, and I can't remember who did it, it was one of the journalists, it was like they would go and interview the dudes who were consuming it, which mm. were yeah. like 50 year old men, mm. yeah, and then that's where you're like, oh. You know, because if it's a if it's a kid, kid you like Ryan's tour reviews where other kids are watching. Yeah, you're like yeah. okay, that's. I mean, there's still got to be some kind of questionable thing. What's going on here with the parents? How are they involved? Is this, is it you know is it is it being run the like in a way that is fair to the kid? You mm, know, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, is the money going to the kid or not? All those questions need to be answered, obviously. But it's it's like it's like it's like fine. Yeah, I mean, obviously 
you would want kids to be within kids content because it helps you know that's them yeah, yeah. You know, they want to be represented uh they don't give a fuck they just want to see other kids um yeah. living cool lives because that's swag but the fact that if like 50 year old men were consuming it and you would like you'd see this dude on like a zoom call with like this girl and she's like 12 and you're like, why? Yeah, like yeah. on the is surface, this? it is the most like morally questionable thing that you could ever see. It's right? fucking yeah. weird. He, even though he may be, he, he may go into it just like completely fucking innocent, right? Like on, on all, you know, all circumstances, right? You would, Fair yeah, enough, no. but still like, when you just look at it at the surface, your first instinct the, is what's going well, there's, on. Yeah. There's, there's absolutely no need for a, a 50 year old man <laughs> to be interacting with a kid in any way that is not like a professional, like a yeah. doctor or something. You know what I mean? Like, exactly, like yeah. if you were just hanging out with kids and you're paying to hang out with yeah. kids- I'm definitely gonna go on a watch worried. list. What <laughs> the fuck? What the hell? You would be yeah. on a watch list on any other country. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. yeah I've, I, I mean, I just find like, I've always found the psychology of, the idol industry fascinating, mm. you know, yeah, especially it's, it's wild. watching these documentaries. Cause a lot of the times you, you know, a lot of times you come in, you're like, oh, anyone, you know, if, if you're a um, 50 year old businessman watching this kind of stuff, mm. then obviously there's something nefarious going on. And I would say from most of the documentaries I've seen a lot of these people, it's more of just like, they are just lonely. And it's kind of like, they have like a sad story, you know? With like the, with the adult idol. Yeah, right? yeah, with, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. adult I was idol. Say, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I, with the adult okay, idol, okay, fans, sorry. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say, I was like, all right, if you're lonely, <laughs> don't talk to a fucking 12 year old. <laughs> Let the 12 year olds yeah. talk to the other 12 year olds. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's like, it's it, it, to me, I find it like really interesting to see what kind of psychology goes into how someone really, really gets, you know, o honestly kind of like addicted to oh, this dude, kind it's, of content. It's, it's total and, loneliness. And, yeah. I, I, and I think there's a lot of um, conversation online about like male loneliness, but the problem is a lot of the time it gets hijacked by like incels and very mm. yeah. right wing conversations. Yeah. So a lot of the times it's kind of not, it's kind of hard to talk about, but you know, I, I do I do think a lot of dudes out there are very lonely. Yeah. And guys aren't good at expressing their emotions or talking about it. So it's yeah. very hard for them to kind of open up and kind of learn about themselves more and know how to express yourself. So I think a lot of guys turn to things like, at least in Japan where it's even compounded even more, I think. From, yeah, yeah. You know, the moment you leave high school, you don't really get pushed to socialize much. Yeah, I, I no. think that is that just compounding like lifelong loneliness that when you get to this age, you're like, I have disposable income. I, a cute girl can talk to me who's very talented and yeah. I can feel like we're friends. And yeah, of course, like this is gonna happen, especially mm -hmm. when people are marketing and telling you, hey, this isn't weird. Look yeah. at all the other dudes who are doing this, who yeah. are your, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. kind of like this whole thing that's compounding just from Japanese society. And I feel like it's happening slowly in the like kind of Western world, but, but more with other services. Do you think maybe that aspect is the reason why like, uh, say like in Southeast Asia, like the whole fucking existence of BNK 48 and JKT 48, like, do you think maybe that, may, do you think maybe it's like an Asian thing? I think yes. Mm. Uh, I think definitely in terms about in terms of just opening up and talking about your feelings, especially in Thailand. Uh, uh, when I was growing up, mental health issues just weren't really a thing. Mm. You know, it weren't in the UK until I was like ten. Exactly, mm. and ev even now, it's still. I, I would argue that it's still, uh, especially in our parents' generation. You know, people in the West may have been more aware and may have heard about it more, mm -hmm. but it feels like at least in, you know, Thai culture and Asian culture, it's not really talked about like at all. And, you know, there are some things that you come across in let's say Asian family gatherings yeah. that, uh, yeah. <clears throat> that are just kind of like normalized. Uh, I, it's kind of like normalized in Asian culture. You go to a family gathering <clears throat> and Whatever, whatever weight you are, you better be prepared for your in-laws and your family to talk about your weight, whether you're yep. too thin or you're too fat, yep. and you are never the perfect no. weight. You are either too thin. Goldilocks does not exist. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> exactly. It doesn't it's matter too little, too much. It doesn't matter if you're fucking ripped as shit. You've been going to the gym every day. You, they're like, yo, have you been carb loading? I feel like you've been carb loading yeah. a little too much recently. They will you know? find any way to not compliment <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the thing is 
because the uh, the uh, the only way to solve that issue uh, is to eat more. Yeah. I don't know what it is about. And e- even if uh, they say that you're overweight as shit, they'll say you're overweight in the same sentence where they sell- tell you to eat like ten dishes that they've <laughs> cooked for you. I don't know why. <laughs> the psychology. I don't. I don't, I don't mm. know. Yeah. Um. Because I just I just don't see that whole idol thing existing outside of Asian countries. Like, could you imagine a fucking L and D forty eight in London or like a <laughs> CRD forty eight in Cardiff? Like, yeah. it's just it's just never gonna happen. I Although it would be kind of epic. I think I think it's like that doesn't. I don't know why. I think that just doesn't gel well with the with the Western mindset. Like yeah. of like that's how they kind of get rid of that loneliness. I don't think that's how they do it. Uh, I mean, but then I we could, have stuff like OnlyFans and stuff that, yeah. that a lot of guys turn to. Yeah, that's and kind VTubing. Of, you know, yeah, that's another I, one. I, streamers just in general. I think. Yeah. Yeah, but I think I think even then, like the way that the Japanese VTubing set up th- to Western VTubing is very very different. I, I, th- I think I you think, think the, so. I think so. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think, think I th- at least the way the audience approach it. Yeah, hmm. I think the big difference between East and West, and in this kind of sense, is that um, I, th- I feel like idols and let's say um, you know OnlyFans streamers and all that kind of stuff. We're both kind. They both kind of sell a similar product, right? Yeah. Uh, it's it's like the kind of like parasocial kind of thing where you feel like you have a connection with that person yeah. or with that streamer. Yeah. Uh, I just feel like here with idols, it's just a bit more in your face. And mm. I've, what I, I feel like the big difference is that, um, at least in the West, people don't want to feel like they're being sold something. Yeah, they don't they want to w- feel like a fan. They yeah. want to feel like a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think when they're, when they're sold a fan experience, it yeah. doesn't, well, at least with some people, I don't think it resonates as, as widely as, yeah, as it yeah. would in Japan. And there needs to be that natural feeling of yeah. like self-discovery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, mates, it's right? just like, <laughs> I wasn't sold this. I made the conscious choice to be like, oh, okay. I, I discovered them for myself. And mm-hmm. then you slowly spiral down into that rabbit hole. Whereas with idols, it's like front and center. Here are the girls. They can be your friends, okay? If you just pay the money, they will be your friends. They will shake your hands, all right? And then Japanese people are like, it's that easy? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it's like, okay. It's like, you know, you can, and if you keep buying their albums, maybe they'll go on a, a lunch date with yeah. you. you know, yeah. Something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? It's like, That's uh, true. it is, you know, it's it's a lot of the times, and it's the same thing with like girls bars, right? Like yeah. dudes will go to the same bar in the hopes that they might, uh, they've paid enough money at one point to hopefully get a date. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I also almost feel like, at least in the West, the whole idea of like boy bands and like idol groups and stuff like that is kind of like a past thing. Like, cause like, I don't know. I feel like J, uh, K-pop has really, that's that it's they've kind of the like void, modernized yeah. Yeah, yeah. it. I feel, uh, I feel like Western boy bands and girl bands have kind of, you know. I mean, the last off. one I could think of was like, Backstreet Boys are like NSYNC. And that yeah. was like fucking 20 plus years ago, right? Yeah. So it's like, since then we haven't, the West hasn't really adopted that style, at least in like the music scene. It's just cause, well, I, I, it's just cause K-pop, yeah, go, go for oh, it. Go, so. go, go, go. I, I, I just feel like it's cause K-pop is just so fucking dominant. Yeah. Now. No one can do it as well as they That's can. True. I also think that, you know, you have to look at the landscape of, uh, you know, agencies and contracts. Mm, like in yeah. Korea, you know, it's still a lot, and you know, Asia in general, yeah, the contracts, uh, you know, normally are very heavily favored in the producer, or the person making the group or you controlling can say this shit. shit. <laughs> uh, you know, whereas over the years, you know, especially in places like California and stuff like that, like contracts have become, you know, very, very uh, well documented that it used to be a lot of abuse, right? So yeah. now, nowadays, you kind of can't make these contracts that are all very one-sided and you can't force the talent to do a bunch mm. of stuff they didn't agree to. So yeah. there's there's like a realistic, like, do you, do, we, do you really think that half of these idol groups or bands would perform as much if they didn't have a producer who had a lot of the power kind of pushing them to do more, yeah. right? Like yeah. realistically, there'd probably be less. Cause did you hear about like the Backstreet Boys contract that they were on? It's probably, I, I do, you know, pretty- do you know, like, Backstreet Boys, right? Like yeah. easily yeah. one of the most fucking popular yeah. Western boy bands of all yeah. time. Do you yeah. know how much money they walked away with when they disbanded? I don't know how much. 100K. What? Yeah. What? Well, yeah, like that's crazy. That because their contracts were so shit. They sold that many songs, the like most well-known boy band walked away with 100K. Yeah, that like that like, that's should insane. never happen. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and I imagine there's something, that I, you know, I'm just speculating that yeah. I imagine the deals, you know, um, are always, very, very heavily leaning towards way favored for the talent. Yeah. Uh, sorry, for the agency. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like 
in Japan, like MCMs or like agencies for YouTubers, you know, even though it's like a modern thing, like they're still like very heavily skewed towards whoever's running. Yeah. Not necessarily not, not the YouTuber. Yeah. Like I think the pretty common one was like, like for one of the YouTube uh, networks or something here was like 20% for the talent. It's like 20 or 30% for the talent. Yeah. Which is yes. like egregious. Yeah. You know, to give more preference uh, to explanation is what it is normally in the West. It's like tops 10% nowadays. Yeah. It used to be 20, you'd hear a lot, but 10 is they're kind of a standard. 10 for the agency. Yeah, 10% yeah. for the agency uh, and 90% yeah. for the talent because you're the one making. Yeah, exactly. And you're the one who does everything. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that makes more sense. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I feel like a big change is that back then agencies just had a lot more power. Uh, because oh, sure. because yeah. the internet didn't exist. And now you, because, you know, back when, back in the day, there was no way to, if you wanted to be like independent to get your name out there, yeah. uh, because you'd have to rely on these big agencies that had all the marketing power. Yeah. They were like, we can get you into stores and get you in people's radars, yeah, yeah. where now you can have a song go viral, uh, uh, anything like a video go viral. And yeah. there, that's boom, that's your name out. Yeah. You're now independent, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I feel like, you know, it's more power to the artist because the internet, you know, we complain a lot about the internet for a lot of things, but this mm. is one of the good things that's come out of it. You know, yeah. This episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. But did you know it only takes a few seconds to get it? What? That means if you watch this episode on your laptop or iPhone, <gasps> you can get Honey as soon as this ad ends. But Connor, what even is Honey? Let the audience know. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites when at the checkout, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. That's it. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find <gasps> for that site. Mm -hmm. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Mm -hmm. Oh my love. Mm -hmm. You know what else works fast? Honey's deal finding abilities. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Connor, what did you save money on with Honey? I actually saved $30 on a brand new TV stand because I got a new Ooh. TV recently, which was thanks to Honey. But Honey doesn't just work on desktops. It works on your iPhone too. Damn. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. Getting Honey seriously only takes a few seconds. You could have done it now. You could have honestly done it now. And by getting it, you're not only doing yourself a solid, but you'll be supporting the boys as well. And only a few course, seconds. Only a few seconds. a few seconds. So get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash trash taste. That's joinhoney.com slash trash taste. Links in the description below. Back to the episode. What I, what I found really interesting is that um, in like VTubing, I've noticed that they, even though it's the, you might like a particular VTuber from a partic particular company. Yeah. I've realized that they've been like the, 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 groups have been really, really smart about getting you invested more so in the brand name as opposed to the talent. Mm. So that when you're like, oh, this we don't want this talent anymore. It's like, all right, well, people will still want the brand. Right. Which is really impressive. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like, I think if, if, if idle companies had figured this out, this would be game over. The contracts would be like 100 to, Zero. <laughs> well, like I you, mean, you, get, you pay us. <laughs> well, I mean, Japan basically did that with the with the Johnny's group, which is like, oh yeah, the biggest like idol, which is right now getting a lot of shit. Wasn't well, that the guy <laughs> who was like sexually harassing? Uh, wait, boys? wait, what's this? Yeah, I, I haven't heard about this. He, uh, so uh, the this the guy wild, who found way, it. Yeah, so okay. I don't know the full story. I was gonna make a second show. I think he ma he made like boy. Okay, this again. Like maybe you could pull up with that. Yeah, so, so Johnny, so Johnny's is basically the biggest uh, idol uh, agency in Japan for boys. For boys, right? Uh, so like they produce like SMAP, Arashi, like pretty much like all the top fucking boy bands in Japan, which were fucking huge. Um, and the guy who owned it, uh, Johnny something, he's like a half Japanese guy. Um, he, I think he died recently, and all these allegations came out about how he was just like horribly sexually oh, abusive. Oh, to, like, by the way, these allegations talents. had been known publicly for like twenty plus years. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, in Japan, uh, a lot of the agencies have a shit ton of power over the media yep. because uh, I mean, you, oh, you have a Saturday TV show that has variety. If you talk shit about any of our agency, you fucking goodbye talent. Well, no, I mean, you if you no turn one. on yeah. if you turn on Japanese TV at it's any time yeah. during the day, there is at least one Johnny's Idol member like hosting or co-hosting or being on one of these shows. Like they are everywhere on Japanese TV. Yeah. And so, yeah, like the, this fucking story came out. But like, you know, as you were saying with uh, with VTuber agencies, I feel Johnny's has done that where it's yeah. like, even if one group disappears or yeah. they disband or whatever, 
and a new group comes out and you think to yourself, oh, this is just a new group, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're part of Johnny's though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I got to fucking check it out, you know? And it's like, they've used the name Johnny's as like a brand power to be like, even if it's someone completely new, yeah. Yeah. completely irrelevant to what you <clears throat> used to like, yeah. just based on their association with that agency, people are just instantly on that. Yeah. It's fucked. And, and, and that kind of power that, that he had allowed him to do heinous, very horrible yeah, things for, for decades. Yeah. Right. Um, you know. And he got away with it because now he's dead. Yeah. Even though even though it was publicly known that he was doing this before uh, and it was reported elsewhere, you know, it was never pushed in any of the uh, the, the news here. Again, because uh, Japanese news is, uh, from what I've seen is very, uh, you know, they, they don't report things negatively a lot mm. about the government ever. Right. Uh, and they, they it, let's say if there's a, like, so there's a talent agency, again, if you were gonna report negatively, you don't get any talent on your shows. Yeah. So that, yeah. this, that story almost reminded me of that. What's that British I was gonna guy? say, this reminds me of Jimmy Savile. Jimmy Savile. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is literally it's, like that. Yeah, I was like, yeah, British, so much better. We, we would never do that. <laughs> would, that would never no, happen no, in no, England. Like, uh, every, uh, this has probably happened in many, 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 many countries. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you're so popular that you can get away with doing this heinous shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or you can just use your company's influence to bully other companies yeah. around and make yeah. them do what you want. And it's yeah. fucked up, but Don't hey, I mean, again, when we when we called this shit out in, in Japan or whatever, it's not that we're trying to be like, look at Japan, look at all the problems they yeah. have. It's like, no, obviously, fucking the UK is a fucking mess. Yeah, it happens so, everywhere. Uh, <laughs> I just think it's important to point out and talk about it when you talk yeah, about yeah, the yeah. whole industry as a whole. Yeah, yes, of exactly. Course. Um, of course. I mean, everyone knows that there are some uh, dodgy shit going in the auto industry. We, we, everyone knows that mm. now. No, you it's, know, it's like the worst kept secret in <laughs> yeah I, I, the idol like fucking je- like companies. Like yeah. everyone yeah. knows that they're treated like shit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. why we're, we're that's why we're all watching Oshinoko, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they sell a dream, and that's why they, they yeah. Work. That's that's the thing. They if, sell the no dream. No matter how much comes out. As long as you sell that dream, uh, people are going to buy into it. You know. See, that's why that's why Idol Master was a five head move because you can't <laughs> abuse an anime character. <laughs> but no, no, that's, no, no, that's that's that was their way of being like these pathetic human beings with their emotions are yeah. too unreliable. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can milk them for money, but we should make AIs or fucking <laughs> characters that have their own mind and will say what I want them to say and will promote anything I want them to promote. Yeah. And then that way, I don't have to worry about if- Everyone wins. Yeah. If a person's yeah. okay with it, yeah. I'm gonna fucking do it. <laughs> that, that, it is just a matter of time before that happens. Like the like the first AI idol group or the first AI VTuber group, you know, we've, we, we've, we've gotten to the point now. Did you hear about that? Uh, Influencer that made an AI version of themselves. Uh, you mean Amaranth? Amaranth, maybe, yeah. you mean? Was it Amaranth? Yeah, Amaranth. Oh, there was the, she just announced it, but there was another streamer who was doing uh, yeah. another OnlyFans person who was doing yeah. it. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Amaranth is coming out with her own like AI version of herself. Yeah, oh, yeah, which you imagine just jacking off to like an <laughs> AI conversation. Just like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, man. Can you, can you imagine like a trash taste one who's like, hey, you can have a conversation with the boys. <laughs> come, come, come drink with us, man. Be, <laughs> you see trash AI. Can you imagine that? You're just like, uh, hi Connor, uh, poop pooping, pooping, stinky. And it's like, uh, yeah. bread, bread. <laughs> like, it's like, are you eating crusts? <laughs> Get those out of here. Get those out of here. But no, it's, it's so, it's, I, I mean, it's so weird seeing that you can just, I guess, sell your own image now but just have an AI version that they can interact with. Mm. So you're not technically selling yourself, but you are kind of at the same time. Where, yeah. how, how do you like morally draw the line or where do you morally draw the line with that? Well, that's it's, the big topic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, it's, I guess with that argument, it's kind of up to the individual really. Mm. And if yeah. they're comfortable doing it, then it's like, all right, well fine then. No one's, but maybe no one will give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. There, there you go. Yeah, because it's it's so weird. Because like I've I've like I've been on like YouTube Shorts uh, like recently, and there have been some videos. It's getting scary to me now because there have been some videos where I think the voice is AI generated. Like like there's oh there's, no, there's so many of them. Yeah, there's yeah. So many. So some of them are like super super obvious. Like I'm I'm hearing like a story of like Fifty Cent about how he made like his first million or something. Yeah. And like this sounds believable enough that maybe this could be a out of context clip but this could also be an AI generated <laughs> monologue as well. Oh and I'm not sure which one it is. And the only way I, the only way I check is I go in the comments and I'm like, oh, this is AI generated. I was like, okay, thank God. Something felt off about this and I wasn't sure if but I was it, just over judging. Isn't it terrifying though that 
you had to ask other people to that, confirm that. That's what's yeah. so scary to yeah. me. And like, who knows? Like all those people in the comment section yeah. might also just be like getting it wrong. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. I, I, it was a genuine, I think this, I genuine so many times it's happened now where I'm like, I think this is AI, but it wouldn't surprise me if this was also real. Cause I have yeah. no idea everything that Joe Rogan has talked about in his podcast. Um, and I was just like, I, I, and I'm just like, this is actually fucking terrifying. Cause it's getting to the point now where I'm having to question whether some out of context clip is actually AI generated or is actually a real monologue that I'm hearing. I think, I think uh, Philly D said it best where it was like the AI you hear today is the worst it's ever gonna be. Yeah. When right? it's like, that's fucking terrifying to think about. That like, it's gotten, we're talking about how good it's gotten over the past, like even just year. And it's just gonna fucking- Cause do, do you know what terrifies me the most, right? Um, I've had moments where I've heard an out of context clip from Trash Taste mm. uh, that has obviously been clipped by our fans. Yeah. And I've been like, I don't remember fucking saying this. <laughs> <laughs> and the proof is right there. The proof is in the proof is in the uh, video of me saying it. So obviously I said it on like a previous trash taste yeah, and I yeah. just blanked it out. You have no idea why. But if I don't remember what I'm saying now with real content, how the fuck am I gonna be like-, like how Is that an AI issue or is that just a memory issue? That is a memory <laughs> issue and that is an AI issue that I'm calling out now. Cause there might be an AI like generated oh, voice line of me that I'm like, I don't remember saying that, but shit. Am I gaslighting myself? Am I yeah. getting gaslit by AI I now? Have, I might have been dumb enough to <laughs> yeah, say that. I, might have, <laughs> like, I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility for me to actually say this, <laughs> but I don't think I said it. Oh my God, like, don't do that. Uh, guess, gaslighting us in fucking a- hell. Gaslighting us in a fucking 2025 <laughs> AI generated trash days content, man. Like, I, heard, uh, I heard God said some real <laughs> racist shit. Here's, yeah. the, here's the context no, and it's just okay. like, I don't remember. <laughs> no, that's not. There, there are some things I know I do, wouldn't say, but yeah. if there was like a shitty food take, yeah. I'm I'm like, maybe I don't remember I, saying that. Maybe but I did say, but maybe I did say ramen. that. You know, I, I couldn't put it past myself to say that. Maybe you know? I did say that semen tastes okay. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I might have yeah. said that. Huh? <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh, it's terrifying. But yeah, I mean, yeah, going back to the <sighs> idol thing. I did uh saw saw them perform, and I was like, I don't get this. And mm. then they ended it off with, I think, one of the most. One of the most famous like AKB48 songs, I think it was called again, fucking Fortune Cookie or something like that. And, oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. fucking know. I don't watch this shit. Yeah, Fortune yeah. Cookie, yeah. And I was like, shit, I feel a bit of serotonin right now. <laughs> oh no. What? This, Honestly, this, this, God, is how, like, this, this is how it starts. I'm, I'm, you know, you, you say that you missed the whole idol train. You, you're probably better off because I was in Japan when the idol train was kicking off, right? And it was unfucking avoidable. Like it yeah. was goddamn everywhere to the point where my, I tricked myself into liking some songs. Wait, wait, wait. Because that Are was the serious? that was the only way I could be like, I need this torture to end. I'm just gonna tell myself that this is a banger, yeah. and then after a while, I was like. This is unironically a banger. <laughs> Fuck. Is that how they do it? Yeah. Could you do that with any song? If you just hear it enough times, you could trick your brain into thinking, you know, I used to hate this, but now it's kind of it's kind of fire now. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, have you ever been to an idol concert yourself? Uh, no, uh, you wouldn't catch me dead in one, but, <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, th there's been so many, like, again, like Japan loves to do this thing where like, if there's a, if there's a song that's popping off at the moment, they're like, like how yeah. many stores can we put it in? Oh my God, yeah. yeah. In Tokyo, even just in Tokyo. Yeah. To so the point where it's like, you could be walking just down the street in Shinjuku and you could hear the same song coming out of like four different stores at the same time. And it's just like, and that was like that with AKB when they first came out, like some of their like biggest hits. And it was just like, okay, well, fuck. Yeah, because- I can't go outside anymore. I, I, I figured out the reason why uh, hearing like Fortune Cookie, like fired off some serotonin in my brain mm. uh, because I was like, I, just, I don't know, something about this feels homely. And I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know why. And so I look it up uh, and it's got like fucking 200 million views. Yeah. The, BN, the BNK48 has like 200 million views. God damn. Like, God <laughs> fucking damn, oh, what the oh, hell? Yo, BNK uh, popping off. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I was, and uh, Sydney told me, oh yeah, uh, they play that all the time in like supermarkets in Thailand. I was like, no way, I, w I would remember this. And yeah. she was like, no, no, no. How have you never, we, every time we go to like a convenience store in a 7-Eleven in Thailand, yeah. they play this. Oh my and God. I was like, did I just get gaslit into liking an idol song? 
Like, is this, is this it's some- just the soundtrack of your life? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus I, Christ. And I'm like, uh, and I'm like, does, does sub- subliminal messaging have this much power over me? I'm yes. like, and I'm like, uh, I guess, I guess I'm just another sheep following uh classic sheep yeah cla- classic, sheep. It's, classic it's, sheep it's it's always it's always the songs that are just like placed in the most discreet ways right right, right. where it's just like you don't even notice you just like <laughs> you, you listen you, i've had so many moments where some person has like showed me a song where i've heard a song on like youtube mm. or something right yeah and in the back of my head i'm like this is definitely the first time I'm hearing this, but why do I think I've heard this before? <laughs> yeah. And then I realize it's like, oh, it's been, I've heard this song maybe like 50 times, just mm. unknowingly. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, it's, and, and then everything clicks together and you're just like, oh fuck, that's how they do it. That's how they get them. <laughs> that's how they just fucking do this. Do you think that's where Deja Vu comes on? Uh, come, come, <laughs> yeah, comes probably. to play? Like, it's just like, I've experienced this before, maybe in a dream or something, <laughs> but it feels oddly familiar. And I don't yeah. know if, I don't know if it's uh, got any, any scientific backing. I'm yeah, sure there figured is. It out, yeah, figured it out, figured it out. Figured it out. Yeah. Didn't know. Thailand was like that, man. Come yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. Finding, I'm finding <laughs> out new things as well. Yeah, I know. But uh, yeah, also, okay. You guys have done the uh, anime cafe with Emily, right? Yes. How did it feel seeing the anime, the demographic of the anime that, uh, that sh- you had watched in real life? Because uh... I went to the Bocce the Rock cafe. <laughs> And uh, seeing average, I can already see the difference. Seeing average Bocce the Rock fans was uh, interesting to say the least. Well, break break the, it down. What, What's the demographic? What the demographic guy? Uh, so I'm like Bocce the Rock, uh, Bocce the Rock, right? Uh, what what can I garner from this fan base? Probably, probably they're gonna be. I, I was guessing they're gonna be probably about my age. Mm. I was wrong. They were quite a bit older. <gasps> we go in line. Everyone is in business suits. I thought no. I thought I thought that we had I thought that we were lining up for a fucking uh Katakawa meeting or something. I'm like, uh, Emily, have you gone to the right place? We're not we're not going to a Geeks Plus meeting, all right? Am I, are we? I know everyone was lining up for this Bocce the Rock cafe. Oh that God. in like 50s? In like 40s and 50s. That awfully sounds a lot like the K on demographic. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought there would be a few more girls there. Mm. I don't know. Um, and they were only like, aside from Emily, there were only two other girls there that- uh, Based. That, that's <laughs> like, uh, Emily posted a tweet of the picture of the food, put it on screen, Mudan. It looked fucking vile. Yeah. It was, it was it shit. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, Did of course she vomit on that omelet? Like, yeah. why does it look like that? I saw that and I'm not the biggest fan of omelet rice anyway, uh, because I don't like ketchup and uh, they, poured ketchup on it, over it, but somehow they made it look even more disgusting by yeah. just uh, felt like a unicorn vomited on it. Uh, and they were like, that's that's the dish. That's the dish guys. Uh, look, it's the pink bocce. It's bocce's color. It's, it's bocce, but it's melted. It's it's uh, bocce, bocce the rock. And uh, of course that one dish uh, we, we liked to eat there. You had to buy a set meal that costed like Forty dollars mm. that included, and and that was why one of two food items uh, that was like the savory food item. Uh, I got like the uh, there was a chicken curry which has nothing to do with Bocce the Rock. It's just easy to make. Isn't yeah, it? but it had Rio's face on it, so I'm like, oh, I guess this is uh, Bocce themed. Ironically enough, like that pink vomit omu rice was the only real Bocce themed dish on there. <laughs> Um, but I was more interested in just looking around and seeing the kind of, it, it was interesting going to a theme cafe and seeing the actual people who mm. watch the anime, the same anime you watched, right? Yeah. Cause I was asking Emily, what was the cafe that had the most female like demographic that had the most female viewers go to that theme cafe? Mm. Yeah. Do you know what it was? Let me guess some kind of like either like BL one or something with like cute boys, right? It was berserk. Berserk, the berserk. Based, based Japan. The berserk theme cafe. She told me had the, like the, had the highest ratio of girls to guys. 
in that cafe. God damn. And Probably. I'm like, kind of based actually. Uh, <laughs> See, Weebs, you should, this is another reason why you should come to Japan. If you want to find a wife, <laughs> then go to, the Berserk cafe. go to the Berserk Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have something in common, what can yeah. I say? Yeah, cause you, you ain't finding Andy girls in like the Bocce the Rock Cafe, or Fucking I'm guessing hell. like most cute, cause I was, I was surprised that the demographic was like that old, you know. Yeah, I'm not. When I went yeah. to the when I went to the <laughs> I'm, I'm <not> surprised. <laughs> when I went to the Nichijo Cafe with Emily, that also had <laughs> quite a few girls there as well, which was also surprising. And I was like, okay. yeah, because I thought there'd be a lot more boys. I don't know. I, I didn't. I never really thought about like the Nichijo demographic. I guess because yeah. that's kind of like open for everyone. Mm. The one that was hilarious though was the Weathering with You Cafe. Uh, there was no one there, so that. <laughs> So that describes the demographic of that. Well, that uh, describes that demographic. Yeah, that describes that demographic. I'm already surprised about that. <laughs> you know. I think it was literally just Aki and I, and we're just like, oh, all right. <laughs> Let's just order something and get the fuck out. Oh God. Yeah, it was sad. Yeah. No, trying- I still haven't been to a collab cafe that does good food yet. I'll let you guys know. I think I the Nietzsche Joe Cafe for me was probably the best one. It was a good food though. Like the food was decent. I, what I appreciate it's about decent. the- It's always decent. Yeah, the one I appreciate about the Nichijou Cafe is that the, all the items were actual references to mm. the show and they did them yeah, in really funny fire. ways. I, I, I just, think I, I think just, when it comes to themed cafes, the best food I've had is probably the Kirby Cafe. I just want to go to a place where I get as good food as something like another good cafe or restaurant. You're not, I don't yeah. think you're going to. Otherwise I'm like, fuck this then. I'd rather just look at pictures because what's yeah. the fucking point? I think maybe then the Kirby cafe might be good because like that's a permanent store. Yeah, I'm so not a big fan of Kirby though. I'm kind of, I know so you look, I, you look I, sad there for a second. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. So, so you're not a fan of happiness, I see. I don't give a fuck, dude. Kirby's boring as fuck. How fucking dare you? He doesn't I, do I, shit. I gotta agree with How fucking dare you? you? What, like, Kirby, what the fuck does Kirby do other than just eat shit, which I can relate to, uh, but he's just like, come on, man, do something. He's just a cute little fucking pink ball. Like anytime yeah. when I was a kid and I felt really Beta fucking Jigglypuff. sad or angry, or, you know, just had negative emotions. I would just play a Kirby game, depression gone. I Literally. played a Kirby game as a kid and I was like, why does this shit suck so much? <laughs> oh my God. He's just not a game. I played one of the DS games, I don't know which one it was. And it was just, I was like, God damn, this is like worse than every other platformer I've played. <laughs> Kirby fans are just the botchy the rock fans of the video Ooh. game industry. They're just like, oh, look, cute pink thing doing things. Oh, oh, oh. Fuck, is that how it feels oh, like? Oh, serotonin, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I take Kirby over Bocce any day, bro. <laughs> like Kirby is a character I think's aight, but yeah. he, I, every game I But you're play, not a Nintendo fan. I like, yeah, I am, I love Nintendo. What's your favorite Nintendo franchise? Okay, uh, what, 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 what counts as being okay. a Nintendo fan? Right, because I would say I'm a Nintendo fan, even though I don't know if I am a Nintendo fan. I like Nintendo stuff. I mean, Mario franchise is probably the best one. Let's be real. Yeah, they, but that's they, yeah. anyone that breeds at this point. <laughs> yeah, like. but I mean, it's like, it's the best. Like when I think about Pokemon, I'm like there's too many misses. I think about other games. Like yeah. I mean, if someone says like F-Zero, I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> Yeah. You've had really this one- like, That's this, the pretentious Yeah, I'm like, there's two games, yeah. you haven't played it. If yeah. someone tells me like, Earthbound, I'm like, are you okay? Uh, hey, I like Earthbound. Yeah, but cool. if it's your favorite, right. like, are you good? Oh no, it's not my it's, <laughs> it's you, up there, but it's not my okay? favorite. Are you okay? All right, let's, like let's- Zelda, I'm like, understandable. No, yeah, Zelda's right. probably the best. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Zelda's the best. Okay, what, okay, let's let's gate keep Nintendo for a second. Okay. Let's, let's gate keep Nintendo fans. <laughs> what makes, at which point does someone become a true Nintendo fan versus just, here's some shit I played as a kid. You know, I think, okay, this is just my definition of it for uh-huh. all, from how I see it. But like, I think it's one of those things where it's like, it's been with you all your life and you're still heavily involved in it. Right. Right. Because it's like, you know, there's a lot of games that people like, you know, a lot of people, especially in our age group, right. Grew up playing Nintendo games, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. It was, it was, you were either like team Sony or you were team Nintendo or team Sega, right? Like yeah. that, that, that was the three genders. And like, I feel like Nintendo fans, uh, like I classify myself as a Nintendo fan because I never touched any of like the Sony stuff. I never owned a Sony console. Uh, <laughs> say, faithful. Yeah, faithful. Yeah, I was, I was faithful. I was faithful. I only had Nintendo consoles growing up. So it's like, I play Nintendo games all my life. Nintendo games are still like the main games that I play yeah. to this day as well. So like, I would say I'm a Nintendo <laughs> fan, all right? Just a game fan. I like get good games. And yeah, Nintendo and, have yeah. a lot of and good games. And that's fine, yeah. Like, I, there's yeah. a lot of other games I like, like as well, but I think at the end of the day, I always go back to playing Nintendo games. Like I was always the Nintendo kid, 
Like yes. up to the- <laughs> I know, am uh, the Nintendo kid. I, 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 I am the Nintendo to kid. to me as kind of the Nintendo kid. You should kid. put that in your Twitter bio. <laughs> yeah, the Nintendo, Nintendo kid. The Nintendo I'm kid, actually. The Nintendo Everyone kid. was like, are you playing Sonic? And I'm like, oh, oh like, I, like I would ever buy a Sega Mega Drive. <laughs> are you playing Metal Gear Solid? Oh, what is that, a PlayStation? Um, Is that available on GameCube? Which uh, Twin Snakes was actually available on the GameCube. Yeah, it was. Uh, Good game. Uh, but uh, yeah, up to the GameCube, I owned nothing and I played nothing but Nintendo mm-hmm. games. When, whenever someone talks about their nostalgia with Tony Hawk's or some shit like that, I'm like, I don't get that. Uh, mm. I I went to my cousin and he had Tony PS2? Hawk. I didn't have a PS2. I did, I did Bro, they were have, like giving those away. Uh, PS2 is like 10 bucks. Nah, I, did not have P- I did not have a PS2. I was like, I had this like weird, um, like, loyalty to Nintendo. I was yeah. like, no matter what, I was like, no matter what all the other kids are playing, I refuse to play anything but the GameCube. I, and then I became yeah. a gamer. I got an Xbox 360 and then I was like, oh, good games are on other platforms as well. <laughs> but like, uh, I mean, we had a PS2 and I just remember the one thing about it was that like, we used to just get so many pirated games mm. and it made it so much cheaper to be a, to play on PlayStation 2. Right. Because mm-hmm. Nintendo, you know, they were always full price till the GameCube kind of like tanked and then they were yeah. like, Okay, maybe we got to do a few sales. Uh, mm. But yeah, the PS2 games, you could just get them super easily. Well, I'm pretty sure my dad got like half of them from like the pub. Yeah. He would just go and some guy would just give out CDs. <laughs> <laughs> he, was doing, he was doing PlayStation <laughs> drug deals at the pub. I, yeah. Yeah, I think there was just a guy who's like, yeah, if you want PS2 games, like, let me know. For speed and I guess you just give him a tenner and he just hand over like 50 games. Yeah. Oh, damn. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. I think, yeah. yeah. I don't no, know. Like, look, I like, I, no I, one has the right to like fucking determine like, oh, you're a Nintendo fan. You're not a Nintendo fan. It's like fucking whatever, right? But like, yeah. you know, I think there's nothing wrong with like, you know, like in your situation where it's like you grew up playing Nintendo games and then you discovered other games, right? And and you're playing that, right? Yeah. But I think, I don't know, somewhere deep inside of me, there's still a part of me that's just like, I will always go back to playing a Nintendo game. But I, I, I find that really interesting because mm. I feel like Nintendo, like I, 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 I totally, Get where you're coming from because mm. I feel like Nintendo's the only, let's say, gaming brand that has that kind of brand loyalty to them. Because you know, back in the day when there was the console war, you would have people like you know the Xbox kid, mm. um, fucking Sony fans as well. But nowadays, it's just like hardcore. Nin- there's hardcore Nintendo fans, and then there are gamers. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean. <laughs> like just, just just like there are idol fans and music fans. Yeah, <laughs> there's like no it's one exactly the same. No one with a PS5 is going like, oh, I, I'm a I'm a fucking PlayStation fan, man. <laughs> I I bleed Sony. I bleed PlayStation. No one does uh, that. I mean, during like the Wii U era, it felt like Nintendo was kind of a joke. I mean, they were. And everyone was kind of, <laughs> and everyone was kind of like, fucking Nintendo's for a little baby. Nintendo <laughs> fell off. <laughs> they, they did. They did they, fall they off. They fucking fell off. And then the Switch kind of- And then they came back with the Switch. Baby. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's- oh, go ahead, I, go I think the loyalty is, will probably only keep up as long as they keep making good games and consoles. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they still, make, they still make great games, mm. but I have no loyalty to their games like I used mm. to. And I feel like some people will play you Nintendo should, games. You should be loyal to a company that doesn't care about you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, like we've talked about Pokemon before, but you mm. know, people are fucking loyal to Pokemon, even though comparatively to the other franchises like Mario and Zelda, I feel like Pokemon games are a, a lot worse designed and a lot worse games. Than, uh, uh, I've still played every single one. But that's, that's <laughs> the point. That's the point, right? I'm like, when, when a new Mario comes out, when a new Zelda come out, comes out, I'm playing it because it's going to be a banger game. Yeah. When a new Pokemon comes out, I'm like, this is a 50-50 right now about yeah. whether this will actually be a good game or not. I know? mean, you know, in saying that, I haven't enjoyed every single Pokemon game. There's been some real fucking boring and shit ones There's as well. a lot of stankers. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like, you know, at the end of the day, it, whenever there's a new Pokemon game announced, I'm I'm going to be playing it. Cause yeah. I'm just like, I, I'm like this far in, I might as well fucking see it till the end, right? Yeah. <laughs> like I can't- That's a horrible mentality. It's, to it's like, well, you know, like I also am just like genuinely curious to see like, okay, you know, I've literally grown up with this franchise my entire life. Like some of my most fondest gaming memories when I was a kid was playing fucking Pokemon Gold and Silver on my Game Boy, right? Like, right. like that shit is like- But how know. far can nostalgia go? 
Well, that's the thing, right? And and so like, you know, with the with the newest game, for example, I was like, I saw a lot of merits in it, but I also saw a shit ton of flaws in it like everybody else did. And you know, as much of a Pokemon fan as I am, I can't ignore the fact that yeah, the newest game was completely unpolished fucking rushed game. Yeah. Right? Like I can't deny that, but I'm still gonna play it because yeah. I, I still see the little enjoyment that there was in that game to, to see it. To I think, think, I think yeah. we had, when the game came out, we had this discussion and I, I remember I was like, do you not, I, I don't wanna buy those games. I mm. don't wanna be like, hey, let me support this practice of you rushing out shit. Right. Yeah. And and making it seem like it's okay. Cause I, I just don't want to buy games that I know are going to be like, like that, that are, I know that are rushed. Cause you're kind of like supporting that almost. Mm. And obviously if that's not how you view it, that's not how you view it. And that's mm. totally fine. I'm not, that's not, that's not me being like, you should feel this way. It's like for me, just personally, I don't want to be like, Hey, keep making games this way. I'm like, no, 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 just, Take your time. Yeah. Make a good game. No, no, yeah. I totally get that mentality as well. But unfortunately, with Pokemon fans, uh, that didn't stop oh, no, Violet. No, no, it absolutely doesn't stop <laughs> Like, Violet and Skull that. is still the most sold Pokemon game ever. Yeah. Right, and I think that that's more of a testament to the Switch being in more hands than ever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, the amount of Switch is sold is insane. It's like I mean, almost it's... the most sold console after the PS2, right? I'm pretty sure. Um, it's up there. I think, yeah, I think it's a lot. I, think, I still think it's, if you it's add not up that much yet because I think the DS still. The, if you yeah. add up all the DSs, yeah, yeah. it's an, it's oh, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's still it's still a fuck ton of consoles, mm. especially in this modern day where it doesn't. A lot of the times, it doesn't really matter what console you play because uh, most games are available on most consoles now mm. anyway. Especially yeah. if you have a PC. I um, love PC gaming the most by far. Still, yeah, it's just mm, so easy. Course. It's so easy to PC game. I love it. I mean, I guess if you have an, if you have a good PC, yeah, um, <laughs> that's but, the hurdle, isn't it? Yeah, but like once you have a good PC, like just yeah. like I, you know, I, I'm all, I also don't give a fuck about building your own. People, some people are like you have to build your own PC. I'm like, no, don't fucking yeah. do that. It's a pain in the ass. But just buy one. Yeah, yeah, you pay a little bit extra in the parts, but that's why everything when you fucking assemble it costs by a professional. Like obviously you have to pay extra. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, and it takes a lot of the stress out of PC gaming because once you have it, it's just a PC. We all know how to use a PC. People mm. like like installing games is hard. Come off it. Steam is so goddamn easy. Yeah, I I have way less stress buying games on Steam than I do on the Nintendo eShop. That shit is like nine layers of security. I got to enter my PayPal. Do you, do you know how horrible it is to type on the Nintendo Switch as like a console? You like? Wait, well, you have go. to put your information in every time. Yeah, my PayPal, I, it makes me put oh. it in every time. I just attach um, my credit card and Nintendo it's like fan. just as fast. <laughs> They're like, he gets the pass, he gets the pass. I get the pass, bro. It's, it literally- But like, <laughs> it's still like- he, Steam I bought is, Tears of the Kingdom in like 10 seconds. <laughs> but like Steam is just so easy. It's so great. I love it so much. And then mm. I, I love that I can tweak the settings. Like, like if there's motion blur in the game, I'm like off with that right now. Right. Take that off. I can change the frame rate if I want. I'm like, this is just great. Like having this customization is mm. fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, and like, you know, even though, I've I've I got a Steam Deck recently, which I like, and I just I just wish every Nintendo game I could play on that because it's so much mm, better. Yeah, it's yeah. so nice. Yeah, I like for me, I would say that I don't I now I just want a good game because I barely have time to play games as it mm. is. I wouldn't say I'm a Nintendo fan because I definitely I definitely game fan. I'm just I'm just a game I'm fan. A game I would say I. I would say so I grew game. out of Nintendo actually. In yeah. saying that though, you should play Tears of the Kingdom. No, 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 no. I will play Tears <laughs> that of the Kingdom. That is a because fucking like, like, I, that, yeah. like, here's the thing. I don't so care good. if it's made by Nintendo or not. I just care if it's a good game. So yeah. the last, like, you know, last games I've played from Nintendo have, you know, been uh, Mario. Uh, Odyssey. Mario Odyssey. Yeah, uh, it's a great I, game. I completed that. Yeah. Tears, not Tears of the Kingdom, the Breath of the Wild completed mm. that. And I know the only reason I haven't started Tears of the Kingdom is because I'm currently trying to touch grass. Uh, <laughs> and- so, and uh, When's you gonna start Elden Ring though, huh? When, when's that, when are you doing Elden Ring? I would- I'll I'd, do it after I finish Tears of the Kingdom. No, you're not. You're not. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not trying, I'm not trying to get you, Jerry. Yeah. I know you're not gonna play it. I don't know, sometimes you, you do- some, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it's just a vibe of something. I like the vibe of the whole Zelda aesthetic and, you know, Breath of the, the Breath of yeah, the Wild fucking aesthetic. Genshin. aesthetic. Yeah, <laughs> but- uh, well, Every masterpiece <laughs> has its cheap copy. <laughs> Dude, Cause, cause, you mean Genshin 2, right? Yeah, yeah Genshin 2. Gen Genshin was just fucking like, exactly like Breath of the Wild. What do you yeah, mean? exactly. They just took like so many aspects of it. No yeah. wonder you like it. I don't know, I just, I the, the one reason I've never completed like a Soulsborne game is that I just don't really like the, 
Oh, so your reasons have changed in the past months, huh? Huh? Your reasons have changed. You, no, were, you went from, I'm definitely going to play Elden Ring. I just got to wait. And now you're like, ah, it doesn't gel with me anymore. <laughs> I'm like, what happened, God? No, I, 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 I am going to play it because- Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Like, like- He for, lied as easily as I he don't breathed. really like the whole dark fantasy setting. And yeah, yeah, I did. Dark, dark fantasy is just not for me. Uh, wait, you like Berserk? Berserk. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. The only time I really get into a dark fantasy show or story or game is when it's actually pretty fucking good. So, so the product- <laughs> Is Elden Ring not wait, good? No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. So the product has to be good enough to make me, mm. to, to get over that hump that it is a dark fantasy setting. Right. So I know Elden Ring fits in that category, which is why I know I'm gonna play it. Mm. It just like, it just takes that extra bit of push to be like, oh, you should get into this game because I don't really like dark fantasy stuff. I'm more like a sci-fi kind of like person or- What like if a- you streamed it? <sighs> Cause then it'll give you the push yeah. that you're making content and you're finally playing that game you wanted to play. Do I, do I want to do that though? Do you want to go, <laughs> yes. you could go the Ditus route yeah, and fun. stream it for That's 15 fun. hours, make, you know, it, make content out of it. You know, like Honkai and Genshin, I'll just turn your brain off and kind of <laughs> do whatever. I would have to like actually be a gamer if I did Elden Ring, you know? And I don't know if I'm prepared for that. I don't know if I'm prepared for that guys. <laughs> I forgot, he's a Hoyaverse fan, I forgot. True, true. <laughs> I'm a Hoyaverse streamer. There's, there, 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 there is a difference. Man, they, there, there's, there, there's, man, they sponsored you and then they, did, they they made such a good investment. They locked you in for life. Yeah. <laughs> just a few few lump sum payments. That's how they get they you, got, man. They got him on lock. Yeah. God damn. But in other news, uh, we're gonna be at AX. Well, yes. we got R, but Trash yes. Taste is gonna have a big ass boot. Yay. Yay. We're leveling up. I'm hyped for this. Yes, we, we, yeah, right, we, Joey? We. we. <laughs> I'm part of Trash Taste. <laughs> I'm involved. Yeah, Joey. Uh, is having a family holiday, right? Yeah, uh, I think we talked about it before, but yeah, I'm going to Vietnam. So I unfortunately won't be at AX this year, mm. but these two will be, and uh, we're going to be having a massive trash taste booth at the entertainment hall. Yeah, yeah that yeah. should be interesting because- uh, a, Giving a booth at AX is interesting as well. I mean, the whole process was like yeah. bizarre. Cause yeah. it's normally just for like giant companies. Yeah, mm. I, I mean, I saw, <laughs> Uh, we've so technically it's already been announced that we're going to be at AX, but I don't think people know currently mm. that uh, we're going to have an actual booth there, and it's not like Geeks Plus; it is like us. That's yeah. a big boy booth. Yeah, too. It's, it's it is a big, big booth. We are competing against, I believe. Hoyoverse, <laughs> and Aniplex. <laughs> and uh, well, compete, but you know, they, they have booths. Like yeah, they were, they some, were big, some big fucking boys. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, let me, let me, if you go to the AX Instagram. We are definitely the underdogs in that room. To do uh, Ghibli, uh, Bushiroad, Hulu, uh, Bandai Holy Namco, fuck. Side Games, Yostar, uh, Bandai, Normal Bandai. Uh, and then there's Pitiful Old Us. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Trash um, Taste, we're just, hey. We're just chilling, we're yeah. just chilling. We're just chilling. But uh, yeah, we kind of decided to do something for AX because we go every year. Mm. And uh, this year we tried to, uh, we decided to do, try something a little bit different and uh, try to actually see what the booth experience is like. Cause we've seen a lot of other people try to do booths. Yeah. Um, and uh, we kind of just wanted a little bit of experience to what that was like, uh, whether we're going to do more in the future kind of depends on how well this one plays out mm-hmm. because uh, we tried to go as big as we could. We didn't like spare any expense with yeah, our a, ideas. We have a giant gacha machine. Yes, mm. yes. Uh, which has a lot no, of good we mean goodies. Giant. Yeah. It's huge. It's like 12 foot or bigger than that. It's massive. Yeah. yeah. Um, so big that one of us can get inside <laughs> yeah. of it. So. so if you go to the Hoyoverse booth, then you could go to our booth for like the real gacha, yeah, like the, the actual real gacha. gacha. Hoyoverse fans, Genshin fans, if 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 you if you need that gacha fix, just come to our booth. Yeah, you can you can <laughs> yeah. win some of the figures on the set. I think because we were planning on like we were because the gacha because we're the the main way that we're funding this booth is by selling limited uh, AX merch, mm. the, which looks fucking sick by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I don't know if we can show it, but I mean if if we can, pictures maybe. Yeah. It looks so fucking sick. Yeah. Um, Especially if you buy some merch, you can spin the giant gacha machine, Ooh. and yeah. some of the prices go up to uh, like this fucking thing. Get this bad boy. Yep. Yeah, the we're getting Goku the as well. we're getting the fate statue. It, it hurts. You yeah. It hurts to uh, give the fate statue away, but you can also win the fate statue. And I feel like this is the going to be the one that people want the most. Uh, we're going to have Black Goku or Goku Black. You decide. 
It's black yeah. ochre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fucking, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just hyped because, you know, we always get asked to be at other people's booths and I guess it was always kind of like a, it'd be like a fun little, I don't know, see see what happens. Challenge, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because like, you know, like normally only like giant corporations can do this. Mm, uh, yeah. And we found out why, because it's ungodly expensive. It's yeah. very um, expensive. Uh, <laughs> so we were like, let's sell merch. So yeah. we hopefully don't go bankrupt. So if you're at AX, uh, do, do us a favor. Do, do, do the boys a favor and uh, stop on over, check it out. Uh, there's obviously a bunch of other stuff as well. We're gonna have uh, claw machines we're as well. We're gonna have a ton of claw machines. With yep. yeah. Again, stuff you can only get and at AX. Photo op stuff as well. Yeah, we're gonna have a replica of our set oh, as well, yeah. Yeah. where you can sit uh, with the boys. You you can yeah. finally be a member of Trash you Taste. Can be, you can be the fourth member of Trash is, Taste. Is, trash ta is Fortnite overrated? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> trash a, taste yeah. Let's find out. Yeah, I'm, I think we're just fucking hype. I mean, it's been really cool going through the whole process of yeah. getting a space, figuring out how to build what in it and mm. yeah. how much that costs. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's been, it's been eye opening, yeah. and I can see why. Normally, when you need to have a booth in AX, uh, you are a big, massive, established company. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think we're gonna make a profit from this. Uh, if oh, I, I don't think so. Yeah, if, I, if I'm being honest. Uh, <laughs> so, wink, wink. Yeah, uh, yeah. Me and Connor are gonna be at, at that booth. I don't know when. Occasionally. Yeah, we can't announce when me and Connor are gonna be at that booth because one of the big problems is. Uh, we don't want to cause a fire safety hazard because we will be kicked out. That makes us sound so badass. <laughs> We're just so popular. <laughs> I mean, you know, like if, if people know you're coming and lines are not good, they don't like lines. So yeah. Yeah. we'll be there. So to just make sure you we'll, turn we'll up. We'll be there they'll, they'll sometime. Be there. We can't tell you when we'll be there, but we'll be there. I'll be sometime. there I'll be there in spirit. And Joey will get on a Zoom call with us. I'll get on a Zoom sometime. call. Sometime. Yeah. And yeah, we're going to be filming a bunch of stuff there as well. So come check us out at uh, Anime Expo this year. Hell we yeah. have an actual booth. Uh, I'm hyped for that. Yeah, yeah. I'm hyped. But you're, that's not the only thing we're doing at AX. Well, not the only thing you're doing at AX. Or uh, drink. What else am I doing at AX? Did you not want to talk about this last oh, week? Oh, yeah, I did. Sorry, that's not at AX though. Yeah, that's, yeah, I, yeah. okay. I was like, what? This is, not, yeah. this is nothing to do with AX. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I, it, I should have said LA. Have yeah, said yeah, LA. we're doing the, the charity auction, which I think 100% hopefully should be announced by now. And if it isn't, I'm very worried. Uh, yeah, on June 29th, we're doing a, well, I, I'm uh, doing a charity event um, where I've just asked a bunch of YouTubers to bring items to sell mm, for charity. Yeah. Uh, really excited for it. Cause this has been like, Months, 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 months in production and yeah. getting it right and getting it perfect. Um, you know, and the idea has changed a lot over time. Mm. Initially, I was just like, oh, I'll just bring a bunch of my cosplays and we'll auction them off in front of like a real crowd. Uh, and then it was like, well, you know, it kind of seems like a waste to do all that just for that. Cause I can yeah. do that in my room. Let's, let's, let's get more people involved. And then as I was getting more people involved, I was like, I should just, get everyone to bring an item and we'll auction it off or, or a service. Mm. Yeah. So or yeah, a service. service. <laughs> well, yeah, like you could be like, so some people, cause they don't have anything like physical they can give away. They're just like, oh, like um, you can have an hour with me teaching you something or an oh, hour. Oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, you know, cause <clears throat> then that way there's there's different ways people can get value. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, and there's some, some, some of those that I think are, I, I don't want to. I don't know what I will and won't announce before because I, I kind of want to get like I, I want to keep keep some things a secret, but some things are really cool and I want people to know it's going to happen before. Mm. Um, but I, you know, and luckily, pretty much everyone I asked said yes. Yeah. So we've got a ton of really big creators uh, and a ton of really cool items that I'm super hyped to show off. Yeah. Some, some really, really expensive stuff and, and some absolutely dog shit stuff, <laughs> which I think will make it funny. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we're gonna have like a whole real crowd and people yeah. can buy tickets that are very, very expensive. Um, but then the ticket will, I can't remember what exactly what it was. Basically, you're, it'll be a donation to charity. Right, yeah. right. Um, so very excited for that. Is and there anything you want to reveal before or do you want to keep it all a secret? Just trying to think what I should reveal and what I shouldn't keep secret. Because right now I haven't said anything. Um, well, I mean, it's happening in LA. Yes. Is, oh yeah, it's happening <laughs> It's happening in LA, but like, you, you know, the, the tickets are like, there's only like 20 tickets. Right. So. Watch online. Uh, it'll it'll be it'll be fun. Uh, should be able to watch it in every time zone. Hopefully, mm. um, I'm excited for it. It's gonna yeah, be fun. So we, yeah. we have like an actual auction house, 
Nice. And we have- Do you have like a proper auctioneer guy as well or? No, I'm gonna be the auctioneer. Oh, you're gonna be the auctioneer. I'm oh, gonna be the auctioneer. Oh, gonna be the auctioneer. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna be the host, gonna be auctioneering. So I expect you to do like the whole thing of like, oh, we got a $10 over the end of the yeah. $20 over yeah, you here. just might not understand what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. um, it's cool. Cause they like, people can bid in person and at home. Right. So it'll be uh, interesting to see how quickly it might go up with people bidding online yeah. right. uh, versus in person. Mm. Uh, so very excited for it. It oh, should yeah, be a yeah. fun little mix that I don't think anyone's done before because it's yeah. kind of weird and ambitious. Yeah. And you know, I, the whole thing came about because I was like, hey, like, I was talking to Ludwig and I was like, hey, I'd really like to do this thing. And do you reckon you guys, you guys like off brand would be interested, which is the company that he's a part of. Mm. Right. Uh, and yeah, they were super down for it and managed to find a good production company in LA. So very hyped for it. Should be like my most well-produced stream of all time. Nice. Uh, nice. Uh, let's hope that people turn up and watch. Yeah. So I'm sure. I'm hyped. Well. I'm yeah. so hyped for it. Go check uh, it out. We've uh, also donated items. Uh, yeah. Yep. Gone, gone will be there in person I'll, as well. I'll be there in person. I'll be there in spirit. <laughs> yeah, Joey sure. will be there in spirit sure, sure. from I'll, Vietnam I'll, again. Yeah, a lot of people will, will be, if they're not, like a lot of creators that can't make it, uh, who are still interested, will will still be there in some way. So don't worry. Um, but yeah, I think it's uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm super excited for it. Hell yeah. yeah. It's been a fuck ton of work. Um, nice, fuck but, yeah. Yeah, every excited. day I see kind of messaging like different people being like, oh, what, uh, what, what item I, are you I, doing? Yeah, I've never, messaged many people for a project ever because I just, I always just felt kind of weird do, asking people for stuff. Mm, yeah. I know you've done this before. Mm. And I was just like, God, this is so annoying having to chase after everyone. Yeah, um, it's like herding cats, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, and I understand because you're asking for someone to give their time or, or yeah, something, of course, right? Yeah, so it's, course. you know, I, under, I, I don't like asking people for stuff a lot. Uh, and so it was kind of like, I was like, oh, all right, here we go. I've got to contact literally everyone I've ever met yeah. who is a significant creator to kind of get an item and get them involved yeah, in some yeah. way. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy so far with the with the people we, we have on mm. board. So yeah. really, really interesting items as well. Hell yeah. Nice. <laughs> good, yeah. good and bad items. <laughs> um, so excited. I can't, I couldn't imagine trying to keep track of that many people <laughs> and uh, yeah. sort out some Physically like that. then getting the stuff or getting yeah. people to turn up is kind of a lot of work, but yeah. I mean, I, I it should be fun. I'm bad enough. Okay. I'm. I'm I, I guess change the topic now, unless there's something else you want to say. No, no, no. That's I mean, yeah. just I'm just hyped for it. Keep your uh, eye out on it. Keep your eye out. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably talk more about it when uh, maybe I don't know when we're coming up to it or when I don't know when it when it's done. I, I have no idea. Yeah. Just turn up, come watch 29th of June. Excited. Yeah. yeah um, I'm bad enough keeping up with uh, messaging people who like owe me money. You know, for like a group <laughs> event. I fucking despise it, man. The I, I feel like I'm the type of guy who. If it's just like a small amount of money, I'm just like, fuck it, whatever. Let's just forget well, about it. I don't it. think I don't think anyone likes being the repo man, you know? Like, <laughs> being like, oh, by the way, uh, I'm here to take your shit. You know, yeah. like no one likes them. That's, you know? that's why I'm the type of guy who's just like, if I can pay a debt, I, I hate being in debt, right? Cause yeah. I know I know the pain of the person who is waiting, not, not even like, even if they're not waiting for money, mm. you know, it, the, the fact that they have to go out their way to like message me to be like, you need to pay your money. Cause I know, mm. I know I'm gonna forget. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm gonna fucking forget, man. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm also doing a panel with Iron Mouse. I forgot about that of some time at AX. So that'll be fun. Oh yeah, we, I think we don't be streamed as well. We, we don't have our full AX schedule right now. I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna have some events. Mm. Uh, probably just check check out on Twitter. Yeah, just just yeah. check out just check out our Twitter. We'll, That's probably where we'll be telling. We'll actually we'll actually update it for once. You know, <laughs> I'm excited. I, I I like going uh, to Anime Expo. It's always crazy. I mean, you just see the most insane cosplayers. Yeah. yeah, it's just very busy. I can't wait to see the amount of Honkai cosplayers this year. Oh my I'm God. calling it now. It's uh, gonna be one in two. It's, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> like Hoyoverse have just taken over cosplays, right? Last year, like last year I was surprised, not really surprised, actually kind of surprised. Cause I knew Genshin was big. I was not surprised. <laughs> I, I know, okay, I knew Genshin was big. I didn't know, I didn't like, I, a year is like quite a long time in my mind, right? Mm. Uh, Cause that was, was it last year? Last year was the first time that we had gone to conventions yeah. again after like COVID and everything. And mm. I knew Genshin was big. And then it was then that I realized how big Genshin was, mm. you know? Mm. Um, and with how big Honkai, I think uh, how, big Honkai, I think is gonna be. Um, that's just gonna like, they've just monopolized pretty much every cosplayer. I mean, it's because all their characters are just so 
cosplayable. I know, know, like, I know, right? It's like, it's like these character designs are built for cosplay, yeah. you know? The amount of cosplayers and artists that don't even play the games, but are like, yeah, I just, I just do it. Cause I like the it character designs. It just looks designs. good, yeah. Yeah, do you remember like previous cosplays uh, or previous conventions where there would always be like that one character at, uh, Every yeah. every convention, every year there was always like a hot from, series. Always fucking, there's always Kirito and Asuna. Oh, no, yeah, no, no. Oh, for, okay. that was way longer. Yeah. Though, for yeah. me, okay. Still, yeah. For me, the one the one character I never understood because I didn't realize it was this popular was uh, Junko Inoshima from oh, so Danganronpa. Oh, Danganronpa. There were so many, and I did not understand why because I didn't. My friendship group, like we had one person that played Dang and Romper, and yeah. they hardly talked about it. So I was surprised that this one particular character was just this popular in pretty much every anime convention I went to that year. Yeah, what? It, and it's only Junko as well. Yeah, like, it was only- No <laughs> other Dangan Romper character. No other Dangan Romper, Romper characters, just Junko and Ashima. Yeah. yeah. Why is that? I don't Fuck. know. Some, Another one I always no see idea. so much of, even to this day, is uh, fucking uh, Yumeko from um, Kakiguri. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, you see that time. still to this day. So many Kaki Goody cosplays, and I'm like, I think when the cosplay is easy, you know, like yeah, you, get, you know, that, yeah. that's an anime that is kind of easy to cosplay. Pretty easy, yeah. You get a little a normal school esque outfit, throw on a wig, yeah, you yeah, get, true, true, true. I, I think it's it's like a but Junko is not easy. Yeah, Junko's Junko not was easy. not easy, <laughs> but I, I I mean I guess it's easy to wear as well. I guess kind of more. The closer it is to normal attire, the easier it Fuck. is to. I'm, do. I'm starting to see a pattern here. Okay, so Junko, uh, Yumeko, yeah. uh, you know Gasai from. Yeah, it's Nirai all the insane characters! Fuck. But, but also, it's also kind of easy to cosplay. You know? Himiko Toga from uh, My Hero Academia <laughs> as well. <laughs> Fuck, oh my God. What is it with I mean, what is it with the insane girls and all cosplayers, the insane girls. man? <laughs> Holy shit! Togo cosplay is pretty good though, because you got to do a lot of work, you got to get the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. like all the do? all the cosplays I've seen of all these characters are fucking sick. Like they look so good. Like yeah. I could never do that shit, obviously. But like, yeah, it's it's all the insane <laughs> characters. Why? Why is it's it the literally insane? all the insane characters? Because oh they're like they're just like me for real. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. Like yeah, I can. I can I, fix her. I can fix her. My cosplay, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it'll cool. Keep all, doing it. It's, it'll it's be all Chainsaw Man this year. Oh yeah, fuck. I wonder how many Makuma and Power well, Because Makuma and Power's be. easy, so yeah. we'll see a lot of it. Sure. There were, yeah. there were quite a few Aki cosplayers already, like from the few conventions we went uh, yeah, to. Yeah, I stuff. thought Chainsaw Man was already pretty popular when I- Well, did you see the- um... The mapa thing from the I don't know the, the I don't know which guy it was he yeah. was just like yeah Chainsaw Man didn't do as well as we kind of thought it would do the Jujutsu Kaisen did way better yeah it was actually a uh, commercial flop yeah yeah, yeah. Like, really yeah like they they I saw in an article like they made close to no money off of Chainsaw Man yeah I, which so is they, I think, so they I broke think even was, I think no, I don't I even think, think I, they broke I, even I think the article headline that I, at least I saw again yeah. this is me reading article headlines in the article it's like. Chainsaw Man was a success, but didn't have the same impact that Jujutsu Kaisen did yeah. for the company. Yeah. Like for Mappa. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I started thinking, I was like, yeah, I, you know, the Chainsaw Man kind of came and everyone was like, yo, and at least in Japan, and this is not online in the yeah. Western sphere. This is Japan, everyone's like, yo, Chainsaw Man, three months. And it was like, okay. And then, and but like, whereas Jujutsu Kaisen, it felt like it just wouldn't leave. Yeah, yeah. Like Jujutsu Kaisen just felt like it was. And then the movie came out, and that was huge. Yeah, the, com the movie was a huge commercial success. Yeah. It just felt like Jujutsu Kaisen hype did not die in Japan. And then I guess when I heard that, I was like, yeah, that does kind of make sense when I when mm. I think about how it was being in Japan only, not yeah. nothing to do with yeah. Yeah. online discourse or anything like that. Just being in Japan, Jujutsu Kaisen was fucking everywhere. I think what Jujutsu Kaisen did really well was that they kind of had this like constant stream of new content happening yeah. as well, yeah. because it was like the first season happened and then not too long after that, there was like the movie and in between that, there was lots of promotional stuff and yeah. now like, you know, second season and all that kind of stuff. Whereas Chainsaw Man, it was kind of just like, here's 12 episodes. And nothing so far. Yeah. Right. Uh, here's here's the weird thing though. When did people start getting hyped over Jujutsu Kaisen? Because like it- Right it, away. Really? Cause it felt, like, did you start watching it right away? Cause it felt like when I first started watching, like let's say the first arc of Jujutsu mm. Kaisen, I was like, oh, this is a hyped up new shonen that mm. uh, everyone talks about. Let's see what yeah. it's about. And I'm like, mm. oh, it's, it's, it's good. It's good. Um, and like not many, I didn't really see much discussion or talk mm. about it. And then it just felt like overnight, 
Everyone was watching it. And I was like, when did, when, what happened? Or when did this happen? At which stage did everyone start watching Jujutsu Kaisen? Cause you know, at least- I think it was the moment when Gojo came out. Oh shit, am I? Yeah, yeah, I think Gojo. Fuck, I think, yo, I think, yo, no, you know what it was? It was the fucking yeah. eye scene. It was oh the my eye scene. God, that's that, it. that no. eye scene was clipped oh, and sh- uploaded <gasps> everywhere. Holy shit, you're I, so right. I also think like, I, when I watched Chainsaw Man, I, I thought it, honestly, when I was when you compare them both, you're like, Chainsaw Man is uh, maybe a little too much. Like in terms <laughs> of like, like, you know, when you think about a general audience. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's very sexual. Very, very sexual. It's very weird. It's very weird. The gore is fucking intense, which makes fit for all things that I love and yeah. I really fucking dig it. But I could see how on like a general scale, how something like Jujutsu Kaisen would be way easier to market. Yeah. With, yeah. You know, when you have these characters and yeah, it's about killing fucking, uh, it, you know, there's, there's not guns and there's not humans being killed a lot yeah. of times. It's mainly these spirits. And yeah, some of the cast, you know, maybe some of them get hurt and stuff, but you know what I mean? Like it's, it, it, when you sit down and look at it from like a business perspective, it would make way, it's it does more make more sense yeah. broader audience, that yeah. in Japan as For a sure. whole, that something like Jujutsu Kaisen would pop off more, even though Chainsaw Man was marketed towards like teenagers here. I mean, Japan. I feel that's, that's, I feel that's like a reason why like Demon Slayer, for example, was so huge yeah. in Japan. Yeah, right? Because yeah, sure. I think on a broader scale of things, it's so much more aspects to that show that are just so much easily marketable to as wide of an audience as possible. Whereas yeah. Chainsaw Man, I feel a lot of the hype that was created around Chainsaw Man was, t- it was two part. It was the fans of the manga of Chainsaw Man yeah. and the fact that Mappa's name it was d- definitely felt it. Yeah, it definitely felt like the Western hype for it was, was so much more intense than what I saw in Japan. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I also feel like it's, you know, I also feel like Chainsaw Man only being 12 episode kind of hurt it a lot as well. Yeah. 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 Like I've, I, 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 I feel like I that was that. the biggest factor because I'm kind of kind of realizing now, especially with long running Battle Shonen, you need more than 12 episodes to sell a Shonen show. I mean, yeah. Demon Slayer now one of the highest grossing anime franchises of all time. Mm. Uh, before episode 18, I remember no one really fucking watched Demon Slayer. Yeah. Then suddenly everyone was watching Demon Slayer because of like one banger moment yeah. uh, in episode 18. And I remember for that moment, I was like, you know, I, I remember I literally made a video about Demon Slayer being like, oh, I don't, I don't think many people are watching this when it first came out. And then um, it just blew up overnight. And I feel like something similar happened with Jujutsu Kaisen as well, mm, yeah. where it kind of the like- The Gojo I scene, bro. The Gojo I scene. Did have 12 episodes though, right? No, did they have 24? Sorry? Did you say only had 12 episodes though, right? No, he had tw- 20, uh, 24. 24. Oh, 24. That's pretty it wild. It's also fucking yeah. good to watch. Yeah. I mean like Vinland Saga now, I'm watching it weekly and I'm yeah. like, I already know what's gonna happen, but I love, I fucking love that we have 20, like I can get my teeth in it. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm. 20, 24 episodes, I'm like, all right, buckle up. All right. Yeah. It feels like my, Watching it weekly, the investment is worth more. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder, yeah, I wonder if it's gonna it's gonna swing around. Yeah, because I feel like with Chainsaw Man, it's like the twelve episodes barely got me invested into. Well, they yeah. didn't, they didn't yeah. even get to like the meat of the story yeah. yet, right? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, does, yeah. it does kind of suck because you know, and they're like, all right, wait three years now. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Exactly. Because it's it's like if I compare the first twelve episodes of Jujutsu Kaisen, we're gonna start war right now, by the way. Uh, if I compare the first twelve episodes of Jujutsu Kaisen versus the first twelve episodes of Chainsaw Man, I would say I'm more for Chainsaw Man. But now that the final product is there, there were more banger moments in Jujutsu Kaisen because it had uh had twenty four episodes and. Uh, uh, had some really, really good fucking fights in the second half, which yeah. is my favorite part of the first season of Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen's fights went hard. Yeah, uh, and I don't even feel like Jujutsu Kaisen has even come close to reaching his peak, which is why it's it's good. They're both good, mm. but they're both shows, they're both shonen shows that in my eyes have not come close to reaching their full potential yet. Mm. Is, is Jujutsu Kaisen season two 24 episodes as well? Yes, it oh, has just been confirmed God, to be bro, 24 they, episodes. They're cooking. I mean, they'd be doing a disservice if they only gave you 12 episodes. I'd like, rather wait, yeah, I'd rather wait like yeah. three years and get 24 episodes than wait one year and get 12 episodes. Mm. Cause yeah. I, I don't know what it is. Something about like, yeah, you, you often can't, reach a good climax in 12 episodes without it feeling rushed for like this kind of shonen. Yeah. I mean, I feel um, that's why like the latest seasons of like Attack on Titan struggled a lot, right? Because it's like, we were only given like yeah, we get dri- small we got increments of like 12 episodes where it would have just been much better if we just gave us a huge chunk of 24 episodes to actually invest ourselves in. And now like the hype for it is like kind of slowly dwindling away because it's like, oh fuck, we have to wait again yeah. for the continuation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm kind of starting to realize 
how unimpactful 12 episodes is because there's a lot there's so many 12 episodes anime that i like but now when i think about the anime i'm excited about it's every it's all of them that have like have like multiple seasons yeah. right yeah. that have a longer ongoing story than just 12 mm. episodes i'm trying to th i'm trying to think of like just imagine if one percent of the power that one piece animation had was put into other <laughs> shit we'd get so many episodes <laughs> we get so many episodes dude it, i don't know i i i yeah, I, I, I definitely, again, like watching Vinland Saga really has made me appreciate that. Yeah. Like, I mean, MAP is animating that. Yeah. Like the fact they were given so much time to let that story breathe. And, you know, because I think there could have been an argument where a lot of fans would be like, the, tr the fucking far mark is boring, mm. yada, yada, yada. It's not. I'm sure I'm saying like, this is what like maybe people would say. Because a lot of people are worried that anime watchers wouldn't like mm. the the new season of Vinland Saga. They're like, mm. what the fuck? Why, why is nothing happening? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it really, really helps sell that story in particular and, and helps get the message across by just having this kind of slow progress and, and letting you go through it in a way that isn't rushed. Because I, I do think there could have been a world where it could have been rushed mm -hmm. and it could have been glossed over 12 episodes. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. It wouldn't have been good, but I think they, they, it could have been done. Well, I, th I think the problem is right now that there is so much anime being made and most of them you are- You have to do it in 12 episodes, right? And, and, mo yeah. and most of them are 12 episodes, right? So. Um, even if you have a bang of 12 episodes, just by having 24 episodes, it will stick out more in people's minds yeah. because they've consumed more of it compared yeah. to like yeah. other shows. And I'm looking at, at a lot of these like 12 episode shows that I've watched uh, and a lot of them I know, like I, I think the last one that had like a massive impact was probably like Bocce the Rock, mm. you know, but that's because it was like something new, you know? New. I, can't, okay. I, I can't really I can't really think of a lot of 12 episode shows that stick in people's mind years after they air, you know? Mm. Uh, whereas I think now, now like the meta is having, you know, having longer running series run over multiple seasons. Yeah. Yeah. And also releasing them in a, in a way that it makes sense. Like, mm. I mean, Again, we spoke about this on a prior podcast, but you know, Jojo hype was killed by how it was released yeah, on yeah, Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if it was if that was just they were like, hold up, let's just wait an extra year and a half or two years and let's just drop it all in one go, mm. it would have done better. Or I think even better yet, I, I kind of prefer just the weekly model. I, I, as the the older I've gotten, <laughs> and the, I don't no, know why. No, the more I can't. I, I can't. <laughs> the more I kind of like the weekly model a lot. I'm like, yeah, I like this. I can get invested over a course of a long period of time. No, I, mean, for one I, I, like I, I fucked. I, I, I fucked myself over with Oshinoko and Hell's Paradise, and I hate it. I hate <laughs> waiting a week for an episode. <laughs> you hate that? I hate. I it. like that. I'm like, I, I just want to watch the next episode. And, now. and I, I think one of the things I like most about that is that the show can come out, and 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 I can reflect on my life as the show is coming out. Because sometimes <laughs> what if it's the fuck so, does that mean? Because like sometimes it's like a, a a fifty episode series, right? Yeah, and it's I I can be like, damn, I've been watching this for a whole year, and I can think about how I've had this whole thing to look forward to, and I can think back to like what where you know where I it was. Ain't when that I was deep, watching. dog. But I, 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 I really like that. I don't know why. Like being a part of something for that long right. is kind of nice. Yeah. Um, you know, whereas when you binge it, I don't feel the same That's way. That's what One Piece fans say. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I genuinely think like One Piece fans, they must get some, like there's, cause you know, I mean, obviously I'm still reading it, but I'm not reading it like weekly, but yeah. Yeah. it must be kind of cool to follow something like One Piece fans who have been following it for like 10 plus years. It must yeah. be pretty fucking cool to follow One Piece and have it kind of, follow your like life. life yeah, yeah. That's kind of, yeah, that's well, you I mean, grow up with it. Like I, that's kind of sick. I mean, as that One Piece fan and you know, also as someone who's had some franchises that's happened yeah. to me before, I think the biggest one that sticks out in my mind is Ava. Mm. Yeah. You know, Ava wasn't exactly a weekly show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't exactly a weekly wait mm. to get the next piece of Ava, but yeah. I waited. We were Ava fans. We waited, and mm. you know, seeing it come to an end after fucking twenty five. Uh, yeah, and then you couldn't imagine how you were when you first watched the pr the second one. Or the yeah, first yeah, one. yeah. You exactly. kind of look back and like, oh, and, that's and you look cool. back, but it's you know, cool. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I feel like a year is not enough time for me to be like emotionally invested enough to be like, oh, I, I, I watched this for how much 50 weeks. In a year. I think it's important to self reflect <laughs> on your past year. Because, like, for me, uh, my biggest thing I look for whenever I watch anything, doesn't even matter which, if it's anime, it's just to get like immersed in the story, mm, right? Of course, yeah. That's why I kind of, I'm fine with watching US TV shows a lot of the time weekly because they're like mm. an hour long. Yeah. 20 minutes is, 
barely enough it's time. It's not enough, yeah. Yeah, it's barely enough time for me to like properly get immersed in a story. And which get, is like, which is why I love it then, because I feel super good that when I, maybe one week I got super busy and I couldn't watch the show, and then you have two episodes to watch, you're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Grab the popcorn, get you're a like, drink. 40 minutes, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I think someone else must be relating to this. It's so it feels no. like it's just a treat when you no, get No, no, like, I, I get I get the sentiment yeah, you're going it's through. So nice, I've just, I've just never done it myself. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've I, tried I, doing I, it, yeah. And and I, I'm sure Jesus Kaisen will be like that for me, because I'm gonna try my goddamn hardest to not watch for the first few weeks. Mm. So that I can because you know, a lot of anime suffer from the first few episodes oh, of being kind of worse, man. Shonen's even yeah. worse. Well, it's like my, my personal rule with Demon Slayer, uh from like the past, like from the second arc, arc onwards, I was like, I'm not watching a goddamn episode till episode eight is out. Yeah, because it's it's usually get blue balled till episode mm. eight. Yeah, like nothing happens most of the time, uh, except the the sword arc. Uh, like a lot, I, I did that rule, and then like two episodes in, stuff started happening. I was like, oh. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's I, just, good. I just wait till the whole season's over so I can just binge it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. need yeah. at least like five five episodes. I, I watched like five episodes. Cause that's how I get properly yeah. hooked. Yeah. yeah. That I have that five or six episode binge. Yeah. And then I can be like, now I'm ready to wait weekly. Like I know with, it's worth it. No, with Shonen, it's, it's okay. There are some series I can maybe like bend the rules and watch weekly. Shonen is nigh on impossible because the amount of times I've tried this before where I've watched it, it's the first episode of the fights. You are just getting invested and you're like, damn, shit's about to, shit's about to pop off. And Episode ends. So you wait a week. You're like, I've forgotten what's happened. Oh mm. yeah, they're in a fight. Okay, let's let's. It's about to pop off. And then there's always like the there's always like the three stage act in a fight where at first it looks like you know things are going well or maybe the maybe this time the protagonist is losing. And you're in my mind. I'm just like, okay. I'm waiting for the episode where the protagonist turns it around. Yeah. And it's not that episode, it's the next episode. It's so I gotta invest one. myself again, wait a week. And then in a single fight, last three fucking weeks, I'm like, I didn't even- I, I, third, I, third part is uh, protagonist makes yeah. a realization about themselves <laughs> yeah. uh, and uses that knowledge to fight yeah. and win. And I'm like, <laughs> shit, this is, enough, this is enough time for me to use my brain. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I know what's gonna happen. Uh, and you know, it's, it's not enough time to like reinvest back into that fight to really see the hype moment where mm. the protagonist turns it around or that hype moment happens in the fights. You know? true, true. Especially with Shonen, there needs to be like a natural progression in the fights. But Bochi the Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Bochi the Rock is like, yeah, I could watch that weekly. I, I'm just like, yeah, turn my brain off. Because <laughs> yeah, nothing fucking happens, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> Bochi scare, oh, she just like me for real. Okay, yeah. that's enough. <laughs> yeah, nah. it's, yeah, they're definitely not shonen, but uh, that's why I kind of, I, I like the Netflix model, even though I would still like them to release weekly just because I would, you know, I have patience. I can wait mm. until this. <laughs> I, I have patience. I can Skill wait. Diff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I can wait. We, 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 we get bigger hype for series, now, and I don't. The problem is that I don't know what hype translates to for like profits. Mm. Like, does hype help at all? Like, probably right, because you can probably sell more merch. I or mean, more it DVDs didn't help Chainsaw and, Man. Yeah, well, I wonder. I wonder how Chainsaw Man released in Japan. I don't, I don't know if it was on TV. What time slot it was on? Because uh, Japan sometimes fucking fucks anime over, and they stick yeah. it like. I think Chainsaw Man though was on like most streaming sites, from what I remember okay, in okay. Japan as yeah. well. Um, so I, I think they did a decent job then, like compared to like some of the older shows. But I can easily see a world where Chainsaw Man struggled to find a solid demographic that yeah, really- Yeah, because it's fucking weird. Because yeah. it, it kind of <laughs> touches a lot of, I guess, kind of different niches that would appeal to different kinds of people, but yeah. none of them are all like, like Bocce the Rock, like you said, you know the 50 year olds are gonna show up. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like, like Chainsaw Man, who do you, who are you 100% targeting here? Because it's like edgy teenagers, just, sure. Just, young, yeah. pe young people, young adults, probably. 40 year old man, probably it's a little too weird for them. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like it's it's such yeah. an odd, it's an odd show that appeals to, I think just hardcore anime and manga fans, yeah. which yeah. is great. Cause it's it's a, it's in a fucking amazing show. Mm. And yeah. I don't think anyone would argue it's not, yeah. but I think I, I, I can hundred percent believe that it probably had a hard time just selling itself to no, a, a demographic in a way that would meaningfully make money. Mm. But definitely. is there are some franchises like, okay, the biggest, the biggest one that has never, made sense to me, mm. right? It's uh, Evangelion. Yeah. Mm. I'm just like, 
why why this because if you look at the history of like anime franchising uh in japan ava was one of like the first that had such like a massive hit all around i mean we had like obviously like, like mecha mm. before like gundam and everything like that but ava was just everything everything fucking, about this yeah. was seen everywhere in Japan. Totally. It, was totally it was a like cultural phenomenon and the, i'm like the time mm. it came out and the, t the type of show it was i think if ava came out today it probably wouldn't be yeah but he, like you impactful. look at ava and i'm like this doesn't look like a marketable show. You look, you, you, look, you look at what's happening on screen and you, you just see, no one's looking at being like- I, I, I think mm. it's more marketable than Chainsaw Man. You, you think so? I think so. Cause, okay, first of all, mechs, mechs are great for money, uh, <laughs> number one. <laughs> because cause you, can, you can sell the mechs, they're iconic. Uh, number two, uh, I think the main character, I think Shinji is way easier of a sell than Den Denji. I think Hell nah. Hell I, I, nah. Because I'm, I'm, because, I'm, I'm, I'm a disagree because, with you there. Because <laughs> as we've learned from Bochi the Rock, socially anxious characters <laughs> that are depressed fucking resonate. <laughs> they do well. Denji is is too happy go lucky. No, no, no. And he's too horny. Because you don't want to. You don't want to identify. Okay, with there are two okay walls. look, look. <laughs> you look. don't want to be that horny. Look, you you need to go with you know the the reason Denji works. Denji's the best mate. Denji's not the guy you want to be. Denji's the guy you want to have as your mate. No, Denji. Denji, I feel resonates more with today's audience than. Uh, Den Denji is the guy that everyone wishes they could be, but they're too scared to admit. Yeah, because that's okay. You look at you look at someone like uh, Midoriya, mm. right? Good, good kid follows the rules. Mm. Oh, oh, I just want to be a good boy. Mm. Nobody fucking thinks like that anymore. You know, uh, you know, bitch boy. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, like you, you look at fucking. We're, no, we, you, we're, we're fucking grown ass adults, Carl. That's yeah, why we don't give a fuck. You fucking look at the, you fucking look at like teenagers now, and they're like, yeah, I'm a fucking Denji. What do I give a shit about? I don't know. I actually don't know. What I just want to touch some tits. That's man, all I can. I just want to touch some tits. Denji definitely would subscribe to an OnlyFans if he had fucking income. Okay, look, Denji, I. I don't know. I'm, try, I'm trying to make an argument for some <laughs> shit I made up for a show I don't like. Uh, listen, uh, I think that Shinji being a little bitch boy probably helped a lot. There was, they had sex in Eva, I think, right? There was cum on the hands or something Someone like that. Someone had sex, uh, but it wasn't Shinji. It wasn't Shinji. <laughs> oh wait, I, okay, I know this is through memes only. It's like, yes, I had to have that 30 second sex scene where I show everything. Dude, I, Shinji like fell on top of a naked Ray and still got no pussy. Like he's got no hope, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah but like I came out, wait, wait, when did they get, 90s? 1995. 95. What a horny year that was. Uh, I can see I can see why it worked. I can I see. Thought, I think maybe Ava, might have like kind of banked off of the whole like 90s OVA era of just like, I think anime fans in general were just looking for more weirder out there unique shit. Again, the I, don't, I don't think Ava, Ava would be- Like no. Ava would not today. work today. Yeah. No way. Yeah. I, th I, th I think it just came out at the perfect time. And it was that one show that was like, it's just- Also banger mm opening. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the weave national anthem. It, it is the weave national anthem. But, but like, I think I think Ava was one of those shows where like it it came off a time where people were looking for something that was like weird and unique, but still not so weird that it alienated its entire fan base. And I mm. feel like Ava was just like kind of right on the cusp of that. Maybe. I don't yeah. Know. Also, That's just I, a theory. I think I think in terms of a you know uh, from the Japan perspective, you know the struggle of being a teenager who's being told what to do and yeah. you kind of mm. struggling with that. That's a very, I mean, obviously that's a very universal concept, but I think very much so in Japan where yeah. it's no, like, I've, I'm a teenager and I'm, I'm struggling with my identity here. I don't know where what my place is in the world and yeah. all of the adults are telling me to, to do all this stuff. So I think that's also a massive reason why I was successful. Yeah. And again, it was horny um, and had I, yeah. robots. I think, I think as well, Ava just like really grew from just like word of mouth. Like, Probably, yeah. I, think, I mean, I, I don't know. This is all speculation yeah. I've made based off only watching one season and fucking- Yeah, because like, everything. I feel like not only was Ava like so, like, it, I think the people who really liked it, it started off kind of small-ish and then it kind of grew from just the word of mouth because anime was just getting more, I guess, normal to watch in the late 90s and early 2000s. And then not to mention like the countless number of like people in the industry who like, mm directly, you know, looked at Ava and was like, that was a huge influence or like, you know, that we took a lot out of Ava. And it's like, I think it's just like the combination of the influential factor in the industry and just the fact that it just came out at the perfect time. Mm. And it's just yeah. like, everything just came together with a banger opening on top of that, a cherry on top. 
There you go. Because yeah, yeah. because I, I think I think the big difference uh, between something like say Chainsaw Man and Ava is that I think they just have different demographics. Like period. I think Ava mm-hmm. has. Uh, I think the topics explored in Ava probably resonated with a lot of the older working like. Uh, generation in Japan yeah, at the time where oh there sure. was a lot of this societal pressure. Um, once you grew out, once you, you know, graduated from high school and everything. Um, and that kind of like story um, really resonated with the whole generation of people in Japan. And I think that's one of the big reasons why it became the massive hit that it did. Um, and then 30 but, years later, they became bocce fans. <laughs> 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 actually, actually, uh, I, yeah, you know, those 15 year olds in business suits, you know, they were once in their uh, 20s Ava fans. I, I, I would argue that I think Ava fans and bocce fans have more in common than bocce <laughs> fans and uh, Chainsaw Man fans. Uh, sorry, then uh, uh, like I th- are more likely to have something in common oh than God. bocce fans and Chainsaw yeah. Man fans. I, yeah. yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, I, I truly believe that Chainsaw Man just hasn't found its 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 diehard audience yet that it appeals to. I mean, I th- I think I think they exist, but it's only in the manga form right now. But yeah, maybe. Mm. I mean, I I don't know. I, I also think it's harder to <laughs> to sell merch for Chainsaw Man. Yeah, to, yeah, it's just Ava, a little. You can do anything, Ava. That's yeah, right. I, I mean, Chainsaw Man is just a little bit edgier. It's a little bit. Yeah. It's a little weirder. bit too weird. I Whereas, think for the regular. Person, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jujutsu Kaisen, I feel, is that perfect middle ground from you know, there's uh, let's say My Hero Academia, the mm. kind of like the poster child mm. of like safe. Mm. Kind of like here's like it's, a safe it's got a showing. very similar vibe to like Gantz almost like very horny, yeah. very gory. Oh, Chainsaw Man. Yeah, oh, yeah. I thought you said my hero academia. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Chainsaw Man. Sorry, no, no. Fuck, yeah. fuck, no. Fuck. You remember yeah. when Deku fucks in episode one? <laughs> Just but like, like Gantz. But like, I think Gantz came out out at a time where. <laughs> Edginess was was very much in demand. Mm, yeah. I think edgy edginess is not as in as it used to be. I think people are kind of over. Oh, it. again, because like all these shows banked off of the fucking edgiest period of anime, which is the nineties OVA period. Like, I don't know. Those, yeah, those yeah, were some of the edgiest yeah. fucking shows ever. I made. feel like there will always be a space for edginess. No, there maybe, will be. There no, will maybe be, it won't I, be mainstream, but it's not yeah. as in the forefront as yeah. it used to. Yeah, be. I think it goes in and out of being in the mainstream yeah. popularity, but there'll yeah. always be a demand for edgy shows Cause like, in terms of like peak yeah. popularity. Cause mm. like I'm waiting for, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if this already exists, but whatever this generation's Mirai Nikki will be. Uh, because every, every okay, let, let, hear, hear me out, hear me out. Every generation, <laughs> every generation <laughs> has a shit show that for some reason, when you were a fucking teenage kid, my hero slapped okay. so hard. All right, uh, for okay. me it was like it, for me Elf like the the progression goes: Elf and Leeds, yep, uh, Mirai Nikki, yeah, uh, Akami Ga Kill. Oh god, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I'm like, what is what is this generation going to be? I'm they- praying to God it's not Chainsaw Man. <laughs> I'm praying because no, Chainsaw, no, Man, is no, Chainsaw, Chainsaw Man is good. Like Chainsaw Man is good. Or are we just kill. saying that like we used to say with Mirai Nikki? God. <laughs> We no. all thought Mirai Nikki was a good show when it came out. I've grown up for gay shows. I know. I, I thought Elfin Lee was a banger show I when I thought it was. It. I thought, oh my God, they had so much gore. Like, <sighs> I re- like do you remember the phase where uh, you're like, guys, adults, uh, guys, anime, actually for adults. <laughs> and it would always be the first 10 minutes of Elfin Lee to the be like- The thumbnail was always Elfin Lee. Yeah, the thumbnail was always Elfin Lee <laughs> to be like, yo, people got killed and it's bloody and it's violent. <laughs> Yo, this shit slaps. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's hope it doesn't happen. Oh, let's I'm hope praying. it doesn't happen. Praying. Uh, Ch- uh, yeah, Chainsaw Man is not in that same category because it is actually good. It's actually a good show. Yeah, it's actually a really, <laughs> really Chainsaw Man is fucking amazing. Yeah. I just yeah, like I said, I think we just think it's like a little too gory. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a little too edgy to right now for it to crush mainstream. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope it does though. I hope it does. I, I hope fucking it does. hope so too. I haven't read Further on the manga, apparently it just gets better. Oh my better god! Second better. half is juicy. Okay. I don't know if this is a controversial take. Don't fucking animate a new intro outro every time. Just give me fucking more episodes. Yeah. I, I'm gonna be real. Yeah, I, I, I mean, would okay, much I, prefer I, more episodes. I kind of feel like they did that. That was overkill. Yeah, that it was. It was overkill. It was kind awesome. Of, yeah, it was, but it was, it was too awesome. much. Yeah. yeah. Okay, because here's the thing, right? Attack on Titan, obviously gory, obviously edgy, mm. right? Um, but do you feel like that was successful because it just never kind of like tried to be a shonen or tried to market itself as a young audience and it, it went, here is a mature kind of like story right from the get go. 
Yeah, maybe, perhaps. Yeah. It's hard to say because Attack on Titan's success is a really weird one. It's a bit of an anomaly, uh, yeah. And it's but I, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, but I think no one would say it isn't deserved. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, even Japan, it's, it's still huge. Attack yeah. Titan is fucking massive. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of in its own bubble in that right, where like no other show is kind of like it or done as well as it in mm. Japan. It's yeah. just very weird. It's very odd. I, I feel like that's just because that's, I mean, marketability aside, if you have a good story like Attack on Titan, then at the end of the day, you're gonna get fans and people are gonna try and it, find a way to sell it. It's also like the Titans are pretty fucking iconic. It, yeah. you know, even if you don't know Attack on Titan, you've seen a Titan. You know, yeah, yeah, and you, you're like, well, not in real life, obviously. <laughs> you might have seen one. Uh, but like, you know what I mean? They're so easy to spread, and I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's, yeah, it's so bizarre. It's, it's so, it's such an interesting. Case it, it has, it has so well. such like noticeable like imagery and like oh, yeah. recognizable imagery that sure. no other show looked like or will probably ever look like. Right. Yeah. So that definitely helps. Whereas like, you know, as vividly, as vivid, like visually Chainsaw Man was like, you know, it's not exactly the most like outlandish, like unique mm. visuals when it comes to like character designs or anything yeah. like that. Right. So I think maybe that might be another aspect yeah. where it's like, it's uh, not as instantly recognizable. I, I feel like maybe Chainsaw Man just has, hasn't had enough time. Yeah, I, I, it needs I, more time. I, I, I feel like oven. I feel like it needs to cook just a little bit longer. Yeah. Let him cook. Yeah, I'm, we, I'm I'm fucking hoping that the next season, when it comes out, whenever the fuck it comes out, that it really does. I'm I'm just crush. saying, as as someone who's I read ahead, well. the second half of Chainsaw Man is fucking wild. Like, yeah, I just want them to be financially fucking. Got, I want them to print money. Yeah, just so yeah. That we get more. Yeah. True. True. All right. Well, that's our, you know, our monthly anime tour. <laughs> no more now. No more. No more for uh, next couple of episodes. So hey, yeah, look at these yeah. patrons, though. Yeah. Look at, yeah, look at, the, look at all those swag patrons. money. Are yeah. you are you a Chainsaw Man fan? I bet you are. Yeah. Do Why? you think Chainsaw Man should be more popular, more marketable? Let us know in the comments. But do you think the- do, you, do you think Jujutsu Kaisen is better than Chainsaw Man? Ooh. Let's just start a war right now. I will. I will block you <laughs> if you do say that. But uh, hey, if you like to support the show, then go to our Patreon, <laughs> Patreon.com/slash taste Also follow us on Twitter, send us your memes on the subreddit, and if you hate a face, listen to us on Spotify. And uh, for those of you guys going to AX, uh, we'll I mean, I won't see you there, but they'll see you we'll there. We'll see you there. Check out <laughs> our booth. All, All right. right. So you're at the charity auction as well. We should have watched that. Yep. Hell yeah. All right. All right. See you next week. Bye. Bye.